It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up, tragic scene. New details emerging from that mass shooting in Alabama over the weekend. Four killed, dozens hurt during a sweet 16 birthday party. What we're now learning about the victims as officials search for leads. We're live on the scene with the very latest. Then, major breakthrough. A look at the cancer vaccine that could revolutionize treatment for patients with melanoma and keep their cancer from coming back. Just ahead, what you need to know. Then, blind rage. The first ever Love is Blind live reunion delayed over technical issues. I was waiting for the Love is Blind reunion and this is what I got. Millions around the world left fuming over the mistake. This morning, what fans and Netflix are saying about it. Then, together again, we'll go behind the scenes with Janet Jackson as she kicks off her first major tour in years. Chanel, Miss Jones, if you're nasty, joining the icon on stage. One of the best days of my life. And she'll tell us all about it today, Monday, April 17th, 2023. <laughs> Visiting from Philly. Hi to our friends and family. Happy Kirkwood, Missouri. Celebrating 50 years of friendship from Sacramento. On a girl's trash from St. Louis, Missouri. Real nice. Hi to our grandkids in Manassas, Virginia. Love you, Kennedy, Araya, and Ivy. All the way from Ontario, Canada. Because I'm turning 75. From Albuquerque, New Mexico. Celebrating the 35th anniversary. On a school trip from Carl Arbor High School in Midwest City, Oklahoma. The City Music Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. We're back, 813. We've been talking about this one all morning. Something very special. Yeah. Just happened down in Florida. And it was, it was a really long time in the making. Well, it started in 2019 at our big Halloween extravaganza. We did this like whole dance theme thing. And it's safe to say, without question, Chanel Jones stole the show as Miss Janet Jackson during that Halloween thing. That all led to last night, Chanel's dream coming true. And she is with us now from Hollywood, Florida. She's still glowing. Yes! Miss, Miss Jones, if you're nasty. What's up, my friend? I mean, living a dream. Here, good morning. Good morning. If this is a dream, please just don't wake me. As you guys just said, last December, Janet, Janet made an appearance on our show, and it turns out she actually saw that clip, guys, of me dancing on the show all those years ago, and she invited me to come here to Hard Rock Hotel here in Hollywood, Florida, for opening weekend to get on stage as one of her background dancers. It happened last night, and guys, it was absolutely magical. You know what? I would love for you to join me. Uh -huh. You should. Four months ago to the day, Janet Jackson invited this girl from Wichita, Kansas to be her backup dancer on tour. Well, you didn't have to ask me twice. I am hours away from hitting that stage and living my best life. That's right. I am on center stage at the Hard Rock Live in Hollywood, Florida. It's Janet for Janet's opening weekend of her Together Again tour, her first major tour in four years. When fans from all over the country and different cities come to see the show, what do you want them to feel? Joy, just complete bliss, excitement. By the way, I should mention we're, uh, you're letting cameras kind of follow you around for an upcoming documentary. You're still developing this, but we know it involves family, this yes. tour family, the tour, there are some surprises. I think it'll be uh, quite fun. Do you think there would be a time when you guys would perform together or I get on a so. stage? I hope so. Why do you think now is the time uh, in the season that you're in in your life now to share a little bit more of you or to share some of those things? You know, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm not as shy as I used to be, so I'm a little bit more open and just sharing more in my life than I ever did before and having a, my own family now. And You can be called many things, a singer, Grammy winner, actor, producer, fashion icon, philanthropist, mom. Is there any title that you hold at the top of the list or do they all have a place? 
in there. I think they all have a place, but the one that gives me the biggest gratification is Mama. Well, that goes it. without saying. I said, Mama. Janet's son, Issa, just turned six in January. What is it about being a mom that just completes you? Everything. Every, every, when you're tired, when you need a break, I just love it all. I love it all. When, when you're in that moment, you see something special happens. It's like, oh my God. And I know I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. Sorry, I'm getting emotional because I'm thinking of one thing in particular. And I'll never forget it. And it was just so beautiful. And I just thought, that's my baby. That's, that's, you're making me emotional. Because I get it. I have three little ones. It puts everything in perspective. That's the highest for me, being a mama. Okay, okay. so finally, let's talk about tonight. But me being here all started with good old fashioned <laughs> today show Halloween. I thought you did a wonderful Thank job. Thank you. Okay, so Miss Jackson thinks I did a good job, but I had a month to rehearse that. I now had to learn a new routine in just hours. To help me loosen up, Janet took me to look at her tour wardrobe. These are the costumes for the show. Wow. Um, is it heavy? No, this is light. Valentino did this for Ooh. me. This is light. This is my opening cat suit. They did this cape. Pia Paolo did. This is heavy. It makes me feel very, very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Chris John, he's been a friend of mine for a good while. Mm, mm. Chris John Louboutin, and yes. he, he, I just called him up and I said, Mama needs some new shoes. I mean, if Mama <laughs> needs new shoes, these aren't bad. Once Janet had calmed my nerves from an 11 to about a 10 and a half, it was time for her to take me to meet my fellow dancers. This is our path, as you see all this glow tape in there. Is it the a little lighter than this at, when you're doing no, this? No, it's darker than this. Oh All you see are silhouettes. Let me sit out. Okay. I'm gonna, <laughs> as you right. say, release you uh, into yeah, the wild. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up to God the way I do every okay, night. Okay. It's in his hands. You'll be fine. Thank you, Jane. I'm, I'm a step out. Okay. All, All right. right. Have fun. All right. But right now, fun was feeling yeah, more like one. fear. Yes. But I had to put those nerves aside. Five, six, seven, eight. Lost it a bit. Hey. And then I found out Janet wanted me to come out hey. to ring it together again, the encore song. Crazy! This was huge. She trusted me. I had to nail it. I just anything. go upstairs and practice that little thing. Yeah. I spent the next two hours practicing in my room until it was showtime. What? Kicking it to bed. And suddenly, my nerves melted away, and I just embraced the magic of the moment. And the next thing I knew, I was dancing with Janet Jackson. Go on, Sam! All my love's for you, always been the true and you taught me never fuck. I can wait for you to wrap your wings around me, baby. Wrap them around me, baby. But just like her music, Janet just wanted me to smile to the very end.
And we're back with the multi-talented Reba McIntyre. The queen of country is one of music's most influential stars with more than, if you can believe it, 56 million albums sold worldwide. And she's adding another accomplishment to the list. Lifestyle book author. Not that fancy. Simple lessons of living, loving, eating, and dusting off your boots is packed with nuggets from her hard-earned wisdom. Reba, it is so great to see you. Thank you. Good this to book see looks you. Like, first of all, there's some food recipes in there. Lots of stuff that you're passionate about. Oh. This was one that I noticed. You have a nice little drink recipe. I thought it'd be fun to toast your tour, which just ended. It did. And you. Had what a wonderful this? time. Well, this is a little bit of a, a, a goodness. See how you like it. Woo. What Got is this kick called? to it. Uh, a, little, a, a little bit of goodness. A little electric lemonade? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. That's a little tart this morning. <laughs> That's why we're friends, Reba, right there. Um... How are you? How's, tell me a little bit about the book. Well, the book is a fun book. You know, sometimes you have books that autobiographies that are really diving into stuff. This is just a fun book. You can look through it. You can read it front to back. It's got recipes, stories, new pictures people yeah. haven't seen before, talking about my family, my faith, my friends, and then recipes that are from the restaurant in Atoka, Oklahoma called Reba's Place. It starts with a Ford by your friend Garth Brooks. Yeah. It's a love letter to you. It's a love letter to Oklahoma. Uh, Garth talks a lot about your, your work ethic. Where does that come from? Mom and Daddy. Uh, what do they up, teach you? Well, number one, be prepared, be ready, be on time. And if you say you're going to do something, follow it up no matter if you don't want to do it or if some, a better offer comes up. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Honesty. Yeah. And uh, your word means something. You have a great little quote that I read in the book, too. You're, you think uh, about life. You need the three. Remember the three uh -huh. bones? Yeah. Tell everybody about that. Wishbone, funny bone, and a backbone. Got to have all think about three that. of those. Your wishbone, your funny bone, and then a backbone. Yeah. You have those three things. Yeah. Great little toolkit to have in life. It really is. If you've got those three things, you've got the determination, the drive, but the humor when things don't go right, you can... Uh, kind of dust it off and keep going. And along with the book are remastered songs. What comes with the book musically? Well, it's songs that I went into the studio with Dave Cobb and re-recorded. And then we've got four new songs. Well, songs that were we did later. Yeah. Um, like Georgia and uh, the duet with Ronnie and Kicks, Brooks yeah. and Dunn. So it's, it's great music along with a fun book. You talk a little bit about your past. You know, we talk about your mom. Your mom wanted to be a country singer and taught you and your siblings how to sing. Of course, three out of four of you would go on to sing. What was that like for her to see her dream come true through her kids? Well, she was as nervous as we were. When we got on stage, she would hold somebody's hand and squeeze it so hard and just, you know, so nerve wracking for her. But she was channeling all her energy to us and she would mouth every word we sang. Just living vicariously through you. Yeah, because she didn't get to go do what she wanted to do. And that's what she said to me when I was first going to Nashville. I was dreading it. Yeah. And she said, if you don't want to do this, let's just go on home. But if we go on to Nashville, I'll be living all my dreams through you. And I said, well, shoot, why didn't you say that in the beginning? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Reba, you talk about in the book, too, when she passed, it was hard for you. You had to almost find a spark to find that passion back for music again. What was it that, that re-sparked your love of music? I think it was my anguish, my sadness that Mama was not going to be with us on earth anymore. And I told Susie, my little sister, I said, man, I, I don't even think I want to go back. She said, you'll get it back. How'd you get it back? The want to just returned. Yeah. Going home. Being I was still in Oklahoma. Yeah. And I, I started missing it because I felt mom was still with me and I know that she would be encouraging me. It's such a great book. So you're on The Voice, which is so exciting for us. You may, of course, you remember this. When the show started, nobody knew about The Voice. Uh -huh. Uh, we invited you to become one of our coaches initially. It didn't quite work out. That would have, that's, we got some other country guy named Blake Shelton, who nobody knew at the time. Who, what's his last name? Uh, exactly. Yeah. And here he is now. You're on as our mega mentor. How yeah. much fun was that for you? It was so much fun. That show is a well oiled machine. And I enjoyed going back after all these years and getting to hang with Blake and Kelly yeah. and getting to meet Chance and Niall. It was just a really fun time. What do you so, try and teach the young artists? What do you tell them? And mainly is the communication to the audience. They've got the technique down. And my point was basically really sell the song to the audience with your eyes, yeah. make eye contact. And it was a lot of fun. They're, they're like sponges. They're really wanting some 
some help, some instruction, but some of them, oh my gosh, they could teach There's me a lot. Talent, yeah. A lot of talent. Well, it's Blake's last season, so that big red chair is going to be empty. Just keep that in mind. Because okay. it'd be nice to have, you know, real country royalty sit in that chair for once. Um, <laughs> oh. Speaking of country, how was your tour just ended? Yeah. You're in New York and you played at Madison Square Garden. What was that like? It was wonderful. You know, I'm, I'm the third McIntyre to come to Madison Square Garden. Grandpa was there in the 30s. Daddy right. was there in the in 40s. Rodeo. Um, yeah, they were roping. And then here we had to show up. So Allison, Susie, my sisters, my son, Shelby, and my niece, Chisholm, uh, that was representing the McIntyre family there Saturday night. Well, you're such an inspiration. You feel like family every time you're here. Thank you. We're so glad to have you. Congrats on the book. Congrats on the tour. Thank the new you. music and the voice. We'll, of course, be watching you there. And you're back. We're putting you to work today, huh? I know. Fourth hour, you're hosting there. Yeah. Not That Fancy is out this fall. It's available for pre-order right now. Be sure and catch her also on The Voice. That's tonight, 8, 7 Central, right here on NBC. Thank you, Reba. Thank you. All right, coming up next, the first of its kind adventure for Uncle Al, taking us inside the world of aqua farming. What's that all about? Al will tell us the first. This is today on NBC. We're back now, 8.43 on this Monday morning, and we're kicking off our Today Climate Super Solutions Week. We're going to take a closer look at some impactful ways to combat climate change. Yeah, you know, we're always talking about the problems, but we're going to be focusing on folks who are doing something to help with the solutions. And I got to travel to both coasts visiting two aqua form farms, an underwater sustainable way to raise native seafood and plants. Not only do they provide food, but bonus, helping save the planet. In oceans from the Pacific to the Atlantic, a new blue technique is taking hold. It's called aquaculture, and it's combating overfishing, climate change, and saving many endangered species. When you talk about aquaculture, why are you so heavily investing in that? We import about 90% of the seafood that we consume in the United States, so this helps put people to work in a way that helps sustain ourselves. Rafael Castellanos runs the Port of San Diego's Pilot Blue Economy program. That includes two aquaculture farms, underwater farming for sustainable seafood and shellfish. We were looking for new and innovative ways to solve some of the big environmental challenges that we're facing. The port works with NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, to help farmers like Tori Polizzi, owner of Sunken Seaweed. So, Tori, when, when I think about a farm, I, I, I don't think about seeing six buoys floating on the water. What is this? What we're doing here is testing the feasibility of different seaweed species that can be scaled up in Southern California. 
Underneath the surface where these buoys are, I just have a frame and it has lines going across it. There are like so many applications of seaweed. I focus on food, I like feeding people. And that's exactly what he did. Tory and renowned San Diego chef Jojo Ruiz prepared a meal of fresh local aquaculture cuisine. Abalone, an endangered native shellfish, now being grown here at the port. Yeah, of course he did. Right. And seaweed direct from Tory's farm. I mean, it's kind of like eating frise, except it's salty. Seaweed production has increased globally by nearly 75% over the past decades. And in the U.S., seaweed farming is the fastest growing aquaculture crop. Aquaculture farms like this one are the sustainable wave of the future from coast to coast. I met up with Norm Bloom, who took me out to his farm on Long Island Sound. You're an oyster farmer. How did you get the idea, hey, well, sugar kelp? The state started talking about it. Uh -huh. and they were, well, let's make it go. It sounds like, in a way, you're almost ahead of the market idea. Well, first we got to prove we can grow it. Right. Market. And how's that been going? That's good. Sugar kelp, like Tory seaweed, can also be used in food, cosmetics, or as potential biofuels. It's a new and emerging industry. The kelp harvested here at Cops Island is staying all in the family, used in a cosmetics line designed by third generation farmer Jeannie Bloom. Does that feel somewhat satisfying that you know you're kind of continuing in a way your family's legacy? Yeah, definitely. I love um, merging the two together and if it's good for the environment, it's good for you. Uh, I got to tell you, the future of aqua farming is awfully bright. NOAA is currently identifying sites for potential farms all across the country, and the goal is to create jobs, improve food security, which is so important, and it also helps rebuild protected species and the habitats that they grow it in as well. Just that, incredible, Al. I can't believe how many uses there are for seaweed. Yeah, as I, we were saying, biofuels, also uh, packaging, uh, you know, like a bioplastics. Yeah. Uh, it really is amazing. And again, we, you know, when you think about it, 90% of yeah, our seafood what a huge number. is being imported. Yeah. If That's we can crazy. start, we, we'll never, you know, get it down to zero. But if we can shrimp, uh, uh, oysters, abalone, things like that, and, and different sorts of fish, then we're, we're way ahead of the game. Incredible. Right. That was awesome. Right. Thanks. That That's abalone. just the beginning. Oh, yeah. Solutions. That looked good. Yeah. Solutions. And that abalone looked good, Al. Ooh. All right. <laughs> Up next, all aboard the Royal Yacht Britannia, Kelly Cobiea with a first-hand look at the late Queen's floating palace. But first, this is today on NBC. Monday morning Plaza Picks. Here's, uh, oh, good find here's, folks. here's Mr. Daly here with uh, Noak and Billy from Orange County, California. So, right. Cal, represent. Uh, I spent oh. some time with 13-year-old Declan from Westfield, Massachusetts. This guy watches today every single morning before his seventh grade class. That is dedication, and I met the Marr family visiting from Maine. Had a lot of fun with them. 
The best part about when the folks come come out to the plaza when it's drizzling outside, they get the free ponchos. Yeah. 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 I said exactly. that. Poncho. We could have used some of those ponchos. <laughs> well, after 44 years of royal service, the Royal Yacht Britannia now rests in Scotland, Port of Leith, where it is a five star tourist attraction, you guys. And just last year, it was voted the best attraction in the UK. NBC's Kelly Kobiea took her own tour. Kelly, good morning to you. Good morning. Well, the Royal Yacht Britannia turns 70 this year. It was known as Queen Elizabeth's floating palace. And inside, you can get a rare glimpse into the private world of the royal family. The Royal Yacht Britannia arrives at Monrovia. For more than half of her more than 70 year reign, the Royal Yacht Britannia was the Queen's escape at sea. I'm walking in her footsteps, boarding just as she did. Joining Royal Yacht Guide, Karis Clark. Hello. Hello, welcome to the Royal Yacht Britannia. Thank you. It's incredible standing up here and just getting an idea of what it might have been like for the royal family to be on board the yacht and sailing away. Definitely, so they've got special point down here where you can actually stand and wave to all the visitors. Yeah, it's a beautiful place to come along and it's, it's just a hub of history. A history that began when a young Queen Elizabeth launched the ship in 1953. I name the ship Britannia. I wish success to her and to all who sail in her. Soon the Britannia will become a home for the Queen, the Duke and their children. It hosted four royal honeymoons, including that of Prince Charles and Diana, the Princess of Wales, in 1981. Prime ministers and presidents filled the majestic state dining room and in the royal quarters, a space designed by the Queen herself. So Karis, this is the Queen's bedroom? Indeed it is, yeah, the only place you can actually see the Queen's bedroom now, so. It's incredible to see this space and know that this is where she spent her private time. And what amazes me is, when you look at, the, at Prince Philip's bedroom, that bed looks tiny. <laughs> yes, I know, they chose it. A six foot tall Prince Philip slept in a modest three foot wide bed. The Queen had her own office at sea too, a small study. At the end of a long day, the Queen would sit on these steps, kick off her shoes, and read her telegrams. Relaxing in the sun lounge or the state drawing room, designed to be a country home at sea with a grand piano. It's been played by oh, Princess Diana and Princess Margaret as well, so priceless now. Princess Margaret left her mark as well, quite literally. <laughs> she used to did. stub out her cigarettes? Yes, yeah, she absolutely did. There's little marks on each corner you can still see today some where she stubbed out whilst playing and having a jolly time. After 45 years of service, the Britannia was decommissioned at the end of 1997. Prince Philip wanted the ship to be broken down, its parts recycled for another royal yacht, but the government said no, it was simply too expensive. The goodbye ceremony, the only time the famously stoic queen shed a tear in public. Every clock on board is set to a minute past three, the time the queen stepped off the ship for the last time. Britannia sailed more than a million nautical miles on 968 state visits with the royal family, a kind of global ambassador, and a place the queen once said she could truly relax. This is the only surviving British Royal Yacht. It was recently voted Britain's best tourist attraction. And guys, you can actually host your own state dinner on board this yacht, as long as your pockets are deep enough. Yeah. I Have bet. to be Just pretty deep. Pretty deep. All right, Kelly, <laughs> thank you so much. I love that you can still see the cigarette marks from on the, the piano. Margaret. Margaret. Yes, wow. living history. You said there was an entire episode of The Crown devoted to oh, yes. Absolutely. Wow. Where yeah. the, the Queen explains why she loves Britannia. Exactly. So much. It was a big, big issue for them. Yeah. I had no idea she cried over it. Though. Yeah. Uh, a few minutes from now, third hour of today, we're going to roll out our newest Start Today workout plan. Oh, and after that, by the way, Reba McIntyre. Nice. Guess what she's going to be doing? Putting her to work. Co-hosting. <laughs> with Jenna? Co-hosting with Jamie I wonder if she's going to bring that special cocktail you had. Yeah. 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 Porch lemonade. Woo! Must see Get TV. yourself. You can't get off the porch after that. Yeah. It's good having you, by the way. Carson's going to, oh, thank you. Great good to be here. I had so much fun. Local Great. news and weather, right after this. This morning on the third hour of today, countdown to launch. The SpaceX test today that could pave the way deeper into space. So 
Within 20 years, you think we could have humans on Mars. Within 17 years. An inside look at Elon Musk's historic mission. Then later, together again, as promised, Chanel getting an exclusive look at Janet Jackson's highly anticipated tour. You know what? I would love for you to join me. The music, the moves, and that wardrobe. What does this feel like when you put it on? It makes me feel very, very, very powerful. Mm. Plus, see the moment Chanel lived out her dancing dream on the same stage as the music icon. And then, an amazing take it off today, health transformation. How one member of our Start Today community changed your life and dropped more than 100 pounds in a year. Today, Monday, April 17th, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third hour of today. It's a Monday. I'm Al, along with Craig Dillon, our good buddy, Jacob Soboroff. Soboroff is hanging in because Chanel. Yeah. Chanel. <laughs> Dancing with Janet. I'm not sure if she is off that cloud. No. No, I don't uh, think she's Because this soon. is probably one of the greatest assignments of her life. Of course, we all remember back 2019, Chanel channeling her idol, Janet Jackson. More than channeling, almost like becoming <laughs> Janet Jackson for our Halloween celebration. Well. Well, she manifested that moment last night. Chanel sharing the stage with Janet Jackson and no surprise, crushing it. <laughs> uh, Chanel, we are all still beaming just for you. How you doing? Thank you. You use the word manifest. And last night I kept trying to find the place between, you know, being out of my body and trying to stay in my body and actually, you know, get on that stage. Because Al, when I was in high school. I had pictures of news anchors on one wall and then I had pictures of Janet Jackson on another <laughs> and then kids because I thought kids were cute and one day I wanted kids like literally <laughs> that was what was on sure. my high school bedroom yeah, wall cool. and when I was in seventh grade when I was in seventh grade I would make up dances to Janet and so to be on that stage last night it was just it was surreal. It was wow. You were flawless, yes. honestly. It, to, to watch you, Chanel, I, I, how much time did you have to even learn the moves? It was insane. You got out there, it was like you've been performing oh, with them so forever. that's the thing. We, yeah, so they, we went up, we went on that stage. It was around like maybe three o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then by 3.30, we had to get off of the stage. Oh, wow. So I ran upstairs, you know, I did it a few times. Mm -hmm. And then everybody kept saying, you know what, just have fun, just have fun. So yeah. I will tell you, because this is the third hour and we like to keep it real. That was not the plan. Like I was gonna come out and we were gonna try to do something together. And the next thing you know, I'm like, wait, am I by myself? Okay, I guess, I guess we're just, you know, we'll, we'll show it a little bit. We'll yeah, show we're it gonna, after the commercial so break. But I mean, got, it was, much, it got, was amazing. We got much more of your, your interview. In fact, that's the other thing, and we'll talk about this in a moment, but just how generous Janet Jackson was with her time and with you, uh, we, because she it's was. obvious she it's loves you. Great so conversation. We'll too. check back in a few moments. Uh, it just hang mutual. by. Hang on, my All friend. All right, see you in a bit. See you in a bit. She's right. friends with Janet Jackson yeah. now. Like, wow. It's wild. It's wild. All right. Well, we obviously can't top Chanel's weekend, no, but no, we no. all did stuff this weekend, too. You're just back <laughs> on vacation. I am. I spent last week um, down in the Caribbean with um, my kids oh. and my uh, mother-in-law, father-in-law celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Oh, Congratulations to them. Uh, yeah. Chet, yes. Chet and Terry, happy 50th. And uh, we really oh. got to spend some oh quality gosh, time as a family. <sighs> Thank you. They're on spring break. So my son um, and my daughter, we went jet skiing for the first time oh. as well. Oh, that goes. Oh. Tandem? Oh, I mean, there. You... Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, no. He, he just put them yeah. on a jet ski. Go go they can't find <laughs> Dell. They don't know where Dell is. He's down somewhere. Dell is somewhere around Cuba. <laughs> it was a blast. How about you? What'd you do? Uh, we we had a lovely wedding to go to. You've this been weekend. posting the most beautiful I see. pictures. They look so of good, you didn't they? and Deborah. Yeah, like just every weekend, you guys just get prettier and prettier. Well, well it's one of us does. Not us. <laughs> but yeah, she uh, and we just had a lovely time. We were down in Palmetto Bluffs and oh some of the, our friends who were with us, and just had a great time. And then got back, and one of our uh, our, our minister retired is retiring, so we were able to go make make church in time yesterday. So wow. Yes, you did. Brenda Hassan, congratulations. Amazing. And you did a little exercise this I, did, I spent the rare weekend in New York, <laughs> and Yosef, our stage manager, floor director, took me out for a run. Oh, look, there's me with the uh, with the cherry blossoms. Yes. Where's Yosef? Uh, wait, where's the Yosef picture? There. 
I, I didn't recognize hey, that's him. That's not his shirt's Yosef. Not. His shirt's not off. Yeah, exactly. Some people uh, <laughs> what happened? might say that Yosef ran extra slow uh, for me to be able to keep up. But thank you, brother. That, that is really ambitious awesome. to run with him. How about yes. you? Yeah. Um, we just had a, a, n a nice weekend with the boys. We really didn't do much. We just played. We went to the playground. Uh -huh. You know, so often, you know, people say, how do you raise kids in New York City? Like, how do you do it? I mean, look at it's what you do. Look uh -huh. at how, I mean, there's parks all over the place. Yep. There's trees around. Oh, and the such boys. a beautiful uh -huh. Yeah, right They're in front rusty. of the One World Trade Center. Center, just, you know, hanging out, All having right. fun. You could have yeah. come running with us if you wanted no, to. No, I'm good. I've had enough activity <laughs> with the boys, yeah. Uh, we've got a big hour ahead for you here on a Monday morning. We're going to start there with that historic test flight that's happening down in te Texas. Elon Musk's SpaceX company launching a rocket, a rocket that could eventually pave the way for a mission deeper into space. In fact, we're talking all the way to Mars. NBC's Tom Costello covering this launch for us. Tom, live look here at the, at the launch pad there. I just saw that live look. What's the latest? It's called Starship. This is a 90-minute test flight around the Earth. And as you mentioned, this is all about seeing if they can one day carry astronauts to the moon and then on to Mars. Uh, and we've been watching this because this is the pad near the Texas-Mexican border on the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the FAA has already given the green light. It's uncrewed. Nobody on board. After a few previous failures and explosions, Elon Musk is not promising they're getting to orbit. He is promising it will not, and it's not boring. Elon Musk's vision for the future starts here at his star base on the Gulf of Mexico near Brownsville, Texas. Starship is the most powerful rocket ever built, even taller than the Apollo Saturn V, designed to carry more cargo and more humans. NASA has already paid for the rocket to one day carry Artemis astronauts to the lunar surface, perhaps as soon as 2025. The ultimate goal to boldly go where no one has gone before, carrying hundreds of astronauts one day to Mars, even building a human colony. NASA chief Bill Nelson says it's happening fast. How quickly will there be human boots on Mars? 2040. So. Within 20 years, you think we could have humans on Mars? Within 17 years. SpaceX has been testing Starship for years. On four previous flights, the rocket crashed and exploded. But in 2021, it landed perfectly back on Earth. This test flight is programmed to orbit the Earth, then fall into the ocean off Hawaii. No astronauts on board yet. We're trying to unleash the ingenuity and creativity of private industry with, obviously, NASA considerable oversight because we're putting NASA astronauts on those vehicles. Elon Musk told me in 2021, humanity must reach for Mars and beyond if we are to survive. I think it's important that humanity become a multi-planet species and that we extend consciousness and life as we know it uh, beyond Earth. With NASA astronauts already training for the Artemis missions to the moon, first an orbit, then a landing, the pressure is on SpaceX to prove Starship is up to the job. All right, this stuff is all for Dylan and Al. You know how long it would take to get to Mars? At least, they say, two years round trip. Wow. What does that mean? A lot of space radiation exposure. That's oh. a big mm. problem. And so NASA is trying to figure out how can they speed up a future trip to Mars? And one answer may be nuclear powered oh spacecraft. They've actually started working. They started working on this 50 years ago during Apollo. They've already got test rockets and they're now very much in the planning stages to build a nuclear rocket to carry astronauts to Mars, guys. You have to be a pretty, you wow. you have to be a pretty brave astronaut to risk a, a nuclear rocket ship yeah. and space radiation. Oh, and by the way, you're going to Mars. Yeah. In yeah. two years. I mean, the Ghostbusters yeah. had it strapped on their backs but, and nothing right. went wrong there. I don't even like sticking my face out the window when I'm driving. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, you uh, live in L.A. So. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Right, later, man. All right. Well, speaking of space, uh, Chanel, of course, still up there on cloud nine. She spent the whole day with her idol, the one, the only Janet Jackson. They talk music, motherhood. Chanel, of course, showing off the moves and those pants. Wow. We cannot <laughs> wait to hear all about it. Third hour today. I'll be right back as we continue as our...
This morning, we have an exclusive look at one of the most anticipated tours in years. Janet Jackson is back, and our friend, the dear Chanel, lived out a childhood dream sharing the stage with her idol. Chanel, you've given us snippets all morning. I, I mean, are you ever going to feel normal again, or is this a new Chanel? <laughs> I know. I feel like I feel like I feel like it's a new me. <laughs> but just uh, just as a back just as a backdrop, Janet is celebrating the 30th anniversary of her album Janet and 50 years of a career in entertainment. She's an icon. So the fact that she sat down to talk with me, her first interview in years, and then let me join her on stage, surreal. I'm someone who loves to dance, but hanging around kids who have trained dancing all their lives and I never trained but just because you haven't trained I've come to realize doesn't mean that you are not a real dancer you know what I'm accepting that right now so then that means I'm a dancer too Janet Jackson has been lighting up stages for five decades performing hit after hit and inspiring generations of fans like this girl from Wichita Kansas so four months ago, when here today, she invited me to dance on tour. You know what? I would love for you to join me. You should. The answer was simple. You didn't have to ask me twice. I am hours away from hitting that stage and living my best life. For the first time in four years, Janet is kicking off a new tour, Together Again. I joined her at the Hard Rock Live in Hollywood, Florida for opening weekend. How do you feel, especially with the tour like this? Is it exciting? Is it challenging? Is it exhilarating? Maybe all of it? It's all of that. I love production rehearsals. When the stage is up and we get to do the wardrobe changes and really, really dig into it. And even while on tour, family still takes center stage in her life. Janet's first son, Issa, just turned six in January. And what is it about being a mom that just completes you? Everything, every, every, when you're tired, when you need a break, I just love it all. I love it all. When, when you're in that moment, you see something special happens that you just, you say, I know I'm gonna, it's like, oh my God. And I know I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. Sorry, I'm getting emotional because I'm thinking of one thing in particular. And I'll never forget it. And it was just so beautiful. And I just thought, that's my baby. That's, that's. You're making me emotional. Because I get it. I have three little ones. It puts everything in perspective. That's the highest for me, being a mama. Before I meet with the dancers, Janet took me backstage to look at her tour wardrobe. If I had my way, we'd probably do every tour in sweats and put stones <laughs> yes, and sweats enough. and sneakers because I'm that, I'm that type of girl. This is my opening catsuit and then he, they did this cape, Pia Paolo, this is heavy. What does this feel like when you put it on? Like, is it like? It makes me feel very, very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Then it was time to meet my fellow dancers. Hi, everybody. I'm going to sit out. Okay. I'm going to, as right. you say, release you uh, into yeah, the release. wild. <laughs> Give it up to God the way I do every okay, night. It's okay. in his hands. You'll be fine. Thank you, Jay. I'm, I'm a step out. Okay. Five, nice. But right about now, fun was feeling more like fear. Five. I just think the down, up, down, down up. There we go. Okay, so yeah. down, 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 down. I had two hours before joining Janet on stage for Together Again, her encore song. Yes. Nice. This was huge. She trusted me. I had to nail it. Oh my gosh, thank you. I'm going to go practice. Here all, we're here all day. I spent the next two hours practicing off and on until it was showtime. Kicking it too and my nerves melted away. And the next thing I knew, I was dancing with Janet Jackson. Go on, Sam. All my love's for you, always been the true and it's up me never fuck. I can wait for you to wrap your wings around me, baby. Yeah. Wrap them around me, baby. Yeah. Sometimes he'll whisper in no more pain. I'm gonna do the ugly cry when this is all over. 
But just like her music, Janet just wanted me to smile to the very end. Janet, her team, the tour managers, lighting directors, the entire team, they were all so nice, so amazing. Janet is touring in 33 cities, so no matter where you are, you can find her. She'll be performing through June. Um, and we talk so much more. There's so much more to our interview, so I'll let you know when that's ready. Once I get a power nap, I'll start to, I'll get to writing. We'll put that on uh, today, all day. Uh, Dylan, you know how we always talk about um, when we meet another adult, and we think they can actually be a friend because as adults, it's hard to meet friends. Yes. And so when that happens, Dylan and I will come to work the next day and we'll be like, I met a friend. <laughs> so I feel like I met a friend. <laughs> I'm like, Dylan, I met a friend. Terrific. It was more than I could have expected. I mean, I, I walked in trying to kind of be open to my experience. I mm -hmm. recognize that this is her opening weekend. Um, she hasn't toured in a, in, a, in a while. She hasn't done an interview in years. And so I thought, you know what, let me just, whatever it is, it will be. And it just completely, uh, surpassed any expectation. We actually genuinely got along. Like, we hung out all day. Chanel, two <laughs> things real quick. Number one, that's, first of all, amazing if you're yeah. now officially friends with Janet Jackson. Like, that's, that's just like <laughs> name that's drop city. I mean, and, you know, in my, I mean, you know, in my head. Yeah. yeah, okay. And the second thing, I want to say kudos to you because it looked so genuine, yeah, the fun yeah. that you were having up there, that little spin you did before you walked off stage, like you totally enjoyed the moment. And I'm just like so proud of you for yeah. that because I know nerves can get in the way, but it seemed like you you just, you made the most yes. of it. Yeah. Today's show Hall of Fame, Chanel. Thank you. I said a little... Oh, thank you. Thank you. I said a little prayer before I went out and I thought, you know what? This doesn't happen every day. Mm -hmm. And I, th I told Janet, I'm the proxy for like all of the women who are in the there audience and the, in the crowd and people who have followed <laughs> and, her for decades. The, so have you they told, were living through me. Have you told Uche and the kids you're not back till June? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I'm sure they would understand. <laughs> Safe travels. Oh, we love you. Come on home. Proud. All right. Very thank proud. you, guys. See you so soon. On. Bye, Chanel. All right, guys, we got a whole lot more on the third hour today. Coming up next, an amazing Take It Off Today transformation. A member of our Start Today community shares how she changed her life just one step at a time. And then coming up later, she is a nun on the run. Betty Gilpin is live sharing her action-packed new Peacock series, Mrs. Davis. We will be right back on the third hour of today. to start the week off with an inspiring take it off today. So a member of our Start Today community has undergone an incredible health transformation. About a year ago, Missy Gillenwater took charge of her life and wait until you see the results. But first, here's her story. Throughout my life, my weight has been a constant struggle. To make matters worse, the pain started overtaking my life in the second half of 2021. My mouth, head, and throat hurt so much I was exhausted all the time. Finally, I was diagnosed with acid reflux and that's when my transformation began. My doctor advised me to modify my diet by cutting out fried and fatty foods. And it worked. I focused on eating fresh vegetables and lighter meats. I realized I could improve my health even more. So I started walking. I was 277 pounds and even walking one mile was difficult. 
I persisted and added miles each day. I started posting my walks on Facebook and my friend Laura suggested that I join the Start Today group. In the group, I've received so much encouragement and motivation. Today, I walk 10 to 13 miles a day and I haven't missed one day of walking over the past 13 months. My energy levels and self-confidence are higher than ever and I'm so excited to keep going on my journey. So that was Missy before in her own words. Let's see her now. Missy, come, come on, on out. Yay! Yay! Good morning. Good morning. How welcome, are you? Welcome, Good. Missy. Good to see you. Good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. you look great. Hi. You look great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. yourself at home. So what was, what was the biggest challenge for you, Missy, getting started? I mean, because this, um, it seemed like it was so overwhelming. I've always, my weight's always been fluctuated up and down. And like I said, I weighed 277 pounds. Wow. And um, being diagnosed with the acid reflux mm -hmm. just kind of kicked me into gear to start walking. Um, I was really miserable with the symptoms mm -hmm. from the acid. Um, it like made my mouth feel raw all the time. Mm -hmm. And I went to um, an ear, nose and throat doctor. Uh -huh. And as soon as he looked at my mouth, he said, you have acid reflux. Oh, wow. And I said, tell me what I need to do because I'm tired of being sick. Because mm. I'd been it's sick. It's uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. I had been sick with that for like four or five months prior and not knowing mm. what, what was wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, so I left there that day and I said, I, t I told him, I said, tell me what I need to do. And he's like, well, you're going to have to change your diet. And I said, what foods do I need to cut out? He said, fried and fatty foods. Mm. And... Um, exercise. Yeah. I said, okay. So I did my own kind of little research and figured out what I could eat and what I couldn't eat. And then I just started walking from there. Wow. So when it, when it comes to walking, I feel like it's always, I could do it tomorrow. I could do it tomorrow. I mean, how do you get yourself started? What was that first day like for you? It was rough. Mm -hmm. I weighed 277 pounds and it took me 25 minutes to walk a mile. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you I could have. You did, did it. Yeah. I could. I was going to say I could have easily given up, but I didn't. You did not. Yeah. Did not. How soon before you started to be able to knock some time off of that mile walk? Well, the first two months after I cut everything out, I lost 25 pounds in the first two mm. months. Wow. That's and was that motivation to really kick it yes. into gear? Yes. Yes. What a good example you are for the rest of the Start Today community. What, 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 do you, what would you tell them? is the biggest difference you notice about yourself from 277 to today? More confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More confidence. I have more self-confidence in myself. Um, I just feel better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More energy. I mean, I walk 10 to 13 miles a day now. That's amazing. Wow. You look terrific. Wow. And, and there's just, this one picture back there of you with, yes. with your former big jeans. Yes. It's one of the greatest moments anybody yes. ever gets to feel. Mm -hmm. I was a size 24 in pants, and now I'm a size 12 to 14. Oh, my. Wow. Amazing. Well, Missy, thank you so Good much. For you. Congrats, thank Missy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank real you. inspiration. So happy you're here. Thank you. Yeah. That's right. And you guys can do the same thing Missy did. Just, just the first step. Sign up for the Start Today newsletter by scanning that QR code. All right. QR code. Thank Is you the so QR much, code up? Yeah. Put the QR Let's code put that QR there code. There it is. Boom. There it is. There there is, the is. QR Thank code. you. Missy. Scan that to join the fun. Good job. Well done. Thank you. Coming up here on a Monday morning, we are on a roll with our Start Today workout. Some exercises to get more out of that foam roller of yours. First, though, she's a nun with a habit for action and adventure. <laughs> like that. Betty Gilpin, live, to tell us all about this wild new show, Mrs. Davis. Third hour of today, right back after this.
Uh, we are back now with an incredibly talented actor who's out with a futuristic new show. Betty Gilpin was nominated for three Emmy Awards while showing off her wrestling skills and glow. Now in Peacocks, Mrs. Davis Betty's battling the world's most powerful artificial intelligence. So most folks are embracing the technology. This technology is known as Mrs. Davis, but Betty's character, Simone, a nun, well, she refuses to engage with it. It called me again. She must really want to talk to you. No, I don't want to talk to it. And why not? You know why not? Because it killed your dad. Yeah, Jay, because it killed my dad. Hey, Simone. You don't have to hide your fear from me, ever. You think I'm afraid of it? It, not her. Uh, Betty, this, so thank you, by the way, Good for coming back. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I mean, so we, I watched the first episode yesterday, and it, it, it takes a few minutes to sort of get your head around the concept, but it's a cool show. Yes. How would you describe it to folks uh, who are watching or, or listening? I mean, I keep describing the genre as no country for old Looney Tunes. <laughs> 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 Cohen Brothers meets uh, Animaniacs or something. In the best right. way, it sort of changes genre every two minutes, which is the ultimate actor cat toy mm. for me. Um, but I'd say the general plot is it's a society not unlike our own where a Siri or Alexa-like algorithm called Mrs. Davis has kind of taken over, purports to be benevolent, is in everyone's ear, mm. uh, and there's a small faction of society, myself, Simone the Nun included, uh, who do not trust her slash it, and I think she should be stopped. I heard, Betty, that as, as part of your preparation for the role, you got to spend some time uh, with a bunch of nuns. As a, as a nice Jewish boy, I never really kicked it with nuns. Yeah. <laughs> what was oh, that you like? you got to. <laughs> they, would, they would still like you. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what was it like? <laughs> It was amazing. I mean, my dad is um, an Episcopalian priest, and yeah, he hooked me up with some some nun zooms. Um, <laughs> and I think in film and TV, nun we're used zooms. To, yeah, <laughs> just some casual nun zooms. I think in film and TV, we're used to seeing either climb every mountain nuns, mm -hmm. kind of one dimensional pious, yeah. or horror movie nuns with right, blood coming right. out of their eyes. Um, and I think I had some cliche idea of what a nun was like, and talking to these three different women, you know, they were three different women, yeah. uh, multifaceted and mm. um, kind of living meditations. It was mm. really cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, from nuns to horses now, you're also shooting yeah. a Netflix show. The Natural Transition. Uh, of yes, course. of course. I didn't know what else to do. Um, American <laughs> Primeval, which will be on Netflix. You're shooting it now, but I hear there's a lot of horse riding, yes. a lot of dirt. Yeah, I meant my career natural transition <laughs> from nuns to horses. Um, yes, I'm shooting this show, American Primeval, right now. So it's uh, 1857. It's a mm. lot of sobbing in a corset and petticoat. Um, <laughs> Do you actually wear the corset? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Wow. yes. No, the horse does. It kind of fixes the, the part of my core that never came back after childbirth. <laughs> it's kind of nice and keeps you upright on the horse. Um, but, yeah, we did a month-long uh, horse. They called it cowboy camp, and uh, oh, we just cool. learned to ride horses. It was wonderful. Yeah. I, I love riding you, horses. Speaking <laughs> of your, your, your young daughter, has she grasped the concept of mom's job? Yes. Well, it's interesting. I've taken her to set twice on two different jobs, and both days were scenes where I jumped in the ocean, and I think she just thinks <laughs> I jumped in the now. ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mom's a swimmer. Yeah. She's, She's an aquanaut. She's a marine yeah. 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 We'll see you at the Olympics yeah. then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Betty, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me, guys. And, uh, and check out the show, folks. Again, it's called Mrs. Davis. You can stream it on Thursday. It's available only on Peacock, which, of course, is part of our parent company, NBC Universal. And don't forget, you can also stream Get This all four hours no. of today and your local NBC station live as part of Peacock's new Morning News Live collection as well. All on Peacock. That's right. All right. Well, up next, you don't have to FOMO to join in on our Start Today workout. We're rolling it out to show you some easy strength exercises. Ouch! Third hour of the day, I'll be right back. <laughs> that looks like it hurts. FOMO.
So in case you didn't know, our big start today event in Sonoma County, California, just four days away. We cannot wait to head west for an hour filled with motivation, fun surprises. We got special guests, the show and the event, both sponsored by Sonoma County Tourism. And this morning we have a start today workout using foam rollers Ooh. here to guide us at Soul Cycle senior master instructor Lori Cole. Lori, good morning. Good morning. Welcome Thank you back. so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Today we're going to start with some balancing exercises. Okay. Which after this pandemic, a mm -hmm. lot of us spent so much time at, the at computer, home. computer, right? Yeah. And actually a lot of us are working from home and so we're not getting that commute. We're not strengthening our posterior mm -hmm. chain. And our balance is off. Our balance is oh, off. Yeah. So that's really important to overall like balance in your body and harmony in your body. A body that is strong and a body that is balanced is mm -hmm. a body and a life that feels good. So we're going to start on one leg. You can choose which side. You're okay. going to bring the foam roller to the opposite side. You're going to use this foam roller as balance, okay? okay? You're going to bring one leg up. And listen, this is more challenging than it looks. You can start barefoot. You can start with See? tennis mm -hmm. shoes. Dylan, thank you very much. This is a hip flexor stretch. This is actually going to be a hip flexor stretch to okay. start. So you're going to bring your oh knee over. Uh, Come on down as far as you can. His pants are a little tight. I know. It's not easy. It's not easy even if you're fit, right? It's not easy. Uh, gentlemen, So you can go. do this on either side to start before a workout. That's I always, good. It, it is good, feel. right? That's a good one. So we're starting there. Yes. Then, then we're going to do some balancing here. Okay. So we're going to bring our knee up. And you're going to bring it back and you're just going to pulse right here for a few moments and then bring like it back lunge. up a lunge in the back, making sure that your knee is protected. Bring that knee up. Good. Al, look at you. This Strengthening is, that get post to the chain. You're going to do both. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. Okay. You might want to keep it. But it's not so <laughs> easy, know. right? Oh, Jacob? no. Bring that leg up on the other side. Come on down. That was nice. Now, here's the other thing. You okay. can, if you don't have a foam roller for this part of the series, mm -hmm. you can use a chair. I was going to say. You can use a counter. Mm -hmm. This is for anyone, anywhere. You could do it while you're boiling water. Right? Uh, you, that's right. That's Wait, right. is that an inside joke? Or well, no. it's what I definitely She likes to exercise while she boils water. I do, too. I do right? leg yeah. lifts on the counter. And yes, you I like do. the lunge. You like I love the lunge the because we are, we're just so underdeveloped, mostly, mm -hmm. after this pandemic. So bringing that knee up, coming into a curtsy, a little bit off that oh, mat. A, curtsy. Oh. a little old-fashioned curtsy, bending, and you can kind of feel that standing leg mm -hmm. working oh, as feels, well as yes. the bent leg, right? Feels good. So you've got to get into that. If by working area. you mean shaking furiously. A little bit spicy. <laughs> I like to call it, it spicy. Is. This so, is one of my favorites, Lori. This the quad roll. The quad roll. Okay. So why, why is this so crucial? So this is crucial because fascia, which is the connective tissue in our body, right? It's what holds up our structure. Come onto your forearms and then lift your feet off the ground. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. come up and down. Oh, yeah. Al, oh, I'm so proud of you. Oh, come come to the this? spiciest oh, part. Yes. Are we five and for five? And then lift your knees up. Wow. There, we oh, oh, circulation. Maybe I should have taken my keys out of my pocket. <laughs> So much for ah. five. <laughs> Great. And Guys. if you want to bring it through, come on down. Okay. This feels nice. Oh, yes. No, okay, I'm just going to really? stay down here. It's good. You're, you're such good sport. That feels oh, really good. good, right? You know, it feels like it's time for a commercial. <laughs> I think I just ripped something. Uh, for these moves Those and to pants. see all of Lori's fitness and meal plans, you can head to today.com. Slash start today, yes, Lori. Al. Thank you. So I feel much. bad for the people nice, standing outside the window right now. What a crew. Really what a crew. Side. When we come back, there we go. it's a country morning here in Studio 1A. Oh, okay. There he is, she Russell Dickerson. Love to perform a sweet song that you're going to be singing all day. Throw it all today. Right back after this. Play John Denver through that little bow speaker, and I start dimming those lights.
City Music Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. This is how you should start the week. We're kicking off this week with a little country music. Russell Dickerson has been churning out hits since his debut album in 2017. Four of his singles, including that song, Love, like, Love You Like I Used To, hit number one in the Billboard Country Airplay charts and also went platinum. He has toured the country with Thomas Rhett, Darius Rucker, Lady A as well. Well, guess what? He is now in Studio 1A. Joining us, Russell. Good hey, to see you. Hey, good morning. Hey, 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 hey. This is great yeah. having you. And also great to have you. You're breaking some baby news here. Yes, we are indeed. We just found out, just announced we're having another baby boy. Hey, 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 yes, there Kaylee. she is. Hey, hey Kaylee. Kaylee. Sweet how are, how angel. How you feeling? Yeah. Congrats. Oh, oh feeling good. <laughs> you should be used to a microphone, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And also, there was a little uh, surprise. What was it like when you told your kids? Uh, well, you know, it's he's two and a half, so it wasn't like the the most mind blowing. Yeah. We're like, hey, there, you're gonna be a big yeah, brother. A There's snack. a baby in the belly. Yeah. He's like, all right, cool. Just give me some crackers. You yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Great pictures. Yeah. Uh, tell us about the song we're gonna hear this morning. So this song is called "God Gave Me a Girl." It's my single right oh. now, and uh, it's really just about how it was that aha moment of when I was like, yeah, this is the woman of my dreams, oh. and she, how she changed my life, and yeah. you know. Just God gave me a girl. I love so. And a couple boys, too. And two boys, yeah. yes. <laughs> there you go. Here's Russell Dickerson. Take, Take it, it away. Guys. Thanks, Russell.
guys. Oh. Come on, I love that stuff. song. Thank you guys so much. Yes. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. There you go. There's That's really cool. Yeah. How do you do? There's the girl. There you, <laughs> spots. Yeah. you go there. Uh, Russell Dickerson, <laughs> thank you so much. Congratulations. Congratulations, you guys. Thank you so much. So great having you guys here. Honored to so be much. here. Third hour today, I'll be right back. Before we go, I want to remind you, don't miss the new episode of Health and Wellness Today on our streaming channel today all day. Chanel has simple hacks to help you take charge of your health, and you can catch it this morning, 10 a.m. on today.com slash all day or stream on Peacock. All right, Mr. Sobroff, thanks for being here My today. pleasure as always. Uh, by the way, tomorrow here on the third hour, two sheet pan meals for breakfast and dinner. Ooh, coming up on Hoda and Jenna, country superstar Reba McIntyre is guest co-host. So have a great day today, and we hope to see you back here. Today, we're kicking off the week with country legend Reba McIntyre as my guest co-host. Plus, HGTV's powerhouse couples Ben and Aaron Napier and Dave and Jenny Mars show us some DIY custom creations. And some major star sightings at Coachella over the weekend, including a couple of famous exes. We're talking about it. So it's today with Hoda. And Jenna. It all starts right now. Hey, y'all, it is Monday. It is April 17th. Hoda is off, but in her seat will be a legend. We are listening to Fancy. Can we blast this? Because the queen of country, Reba McIntyre, is our guest co-host today, which is so much fun. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Um, I'm going to miss Hoda, not, not get to see her I today. We're so good to get to visit with you. To get to be with you. I mean, I, everybody knows that I texted my sister first thing this morning. I've loved you. I've loved your music, but I also got to know you as a little girl. So to get to sit next to you now oh, thank feels you. like a dream. And this is on the cusp of a really big weekend that you've had. You played at Madison Square Garden? We did. My very first time there, but I am the third McIntyre to get to perform <sighs> at the Madison Square Garden Arena. Okay. My grandfather, Grandpaps, what we call him, he was at the rodeo in the 30s. Daddy was at the rodeo at Madison Square Garden in the 40s. He was there in 46, 47. Oh, my gosh. So, then, so to get to go and to know that they had been there before you, was, yeah. it, was it emotional? Oh, it was very emotional. My two sisters, Alice and Susie, flew up. And my son, Shelby, and then my niece, Chisholm McIntyre, they all were all there. And it was just 
very sentimental, emotional. Um, I, I really got choked up. And I mean, what's so, you've done everything. We've just called you a legend, an icon, <laughs> but to still get to do first. Yeah. Like to still get to play a new arena. It was still, the first. Was that really cool? I mean, were you a little nervous? I was very nervous, a little unsettled, mainly because I had never performed at Madison Square Garden before. And then the history that we bring along with it, it was very moving and you know, when you have your family in the audience, yeah. that's even more nerve wracking. Yes, and so sweet. Um, yeah. I have to say, I got texts from a ton of friends, because of course, Texas and New York City uh -huh. love Reba. <laughs> and they were there, and I heard you put on an incredible, an incredible show. Well, thanks, thanks. I, we had a wonderful time. Yeah. It, it, the, the show just flies by for us. The band and I and the crew, we have a wonderful time. Well, I know you love your sissies. They're here. Yep. Are they here somewhere? Yep. There they They're are. Here. <laughs> there they are. Look, Alice and Susie. Oh, how much fun! You, yeah. you. Um, one of the highlights of my life <laughs> was that you wrote a song. For which album was that? It was oh, in shoot, I can't early you like two thousands, right? Yeah. And you wrote a song called Sisters, and on the CD cover, which my isn't even here, it is. Sister. You dedicated it to a bunch of sisters. Not just one sister, <laughs> but a bunch <laughs> of them, including your own. Uh -huh. And you put Barbara and I as part of that. Yeah. What do you, what do you feel like your sisters have given you? Oh my gosh, well, Alice, being the uh, <laughs> older sister, took care of Paik and Susie and myself, mom mm -hmm. and daddy out working, and, and uh, she made sure we didn't whoop each other or <laughs> hurt each other. And, and we were there on the ranch in southeastern Oklahoma, so somebody had to kind of watch over us. Totally. Yeah. And that was them. Yeah, and we're tight. And mom and daddy's both gone. And I think it's I think we're tighter now than we ever have been. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay, so Coachella was this weekend. Are you a big festival person? I mean, you normally perform at the festivals. I like to be on stage. <laughs> I don't like to be... Uh, you know, in the, and an audience had a big crowd like that. Well, I sort of agree, but it is like, you know, everybody always dresses up in the festival clothing uh -huh. with the jean shorts. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bad Bunny was the big highlighter. You've done Stagecoach, which uh -huh. is at the same place as Coachella. Is it really a cool scene? It is. It's, it's a lot of people. I've done a lot of festivals in my 48 years of performing, and uh, everybody has a great time. They're there for a long time. Yes. You know, they camp out and either in tents or in Winnebago's, whatever. Do you like that camping out situation well, at a I, festival or no? Um, nope. <laughs> nope. I'm more like, I'll go to the hotel. In your own bed. Yes. I know, there's something about being really dusty and either having to pay for your shower, which I've done, you know, like coin showers. Really? Yes. Coin showers? Yeah, I've done a coin shower before. When Henry and I got engaged, uh -huh. that was the first thing we paid for. <laughs> we didn't do it together, y'all. Coin uh, sh Okay, that's, that's a pretty A coin cool. shower. I mean, otherwise, where are they showering? That's in bathrooms and stuff. Are there bathrooms I'm in, hoping, a, in a tent area? I don't have a clue. Okay, anyway, I don't I know said, how this... I go to the hotel. Yeah, um, yeah. Th that's right. I'm not sure how we got sidetracked, but there was some hot couple news when we're talking about it. Okay? I heard about this. Did you hear about this? Okay, so Sean Mendez, Camila Cabello, they dated for a long time. They broke, broke up. up. Then they were, they were spotted, smooching. Oh, wow, I can't believe y'all have the picture. Uh, well, so, good for them. I know, right? Yeah. Um, I do feel like concerts sometimes bring out those sort of rekindling, you know what I mean? Is it the concert? Is it the music? <laughs> is it the atmosphere? Yeah, all, all the above. All of the above. The shorts, yeah. you know, the jean shorts, uh -huh. the tank tops. Yeah, and it looked a little dark. Dark. Yeah. Music is so romantic. Yes. I wonder who was performing when they made out. Do we have that info? Probably not. Um, but anyway, there is something about concerts that I actually had one of my first kisses at the Dave Matthews concert. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't have a good story for that. <laughs> well, you do have a good story with being rekindled, even though y'all weren't together. Your newest love, who is here. Uh huh. Rex Lynn. But what do you call him? My boyfriend. And something else. Ta he is Sugar Tot. I'm Tater Tot. He's Sugar Tot. We're the Tots. <laughs> Now, y'all have known each other for a long time. Since 91. 
Since 1991? Yeah, we were doing a movie uh, with Kenny Rogers, Gambler movie. Heard of it. And um, I was one of the actors. He was one of the actors, and he gets a big kick out of it. He says his part was riding into a saloon on a four-year-old colt and going, yee-haw, and riding out. <laughs> And then, uh, but we stayed in communication all those years. And then 2020, right before the pandemic, we had dinner together and mm. been so, together. And you since. sort of knew it, even at that meal a little, yeah. that there was something there. I couldn't get close enough to him. Oh. I was just, I left Marty out at the valet and I ran inside to see Rex. <gasps> Oh, Rex yeah. is here. Hi, Rex. Hey, how are you? How are you? Oh, dude, doing great. I've already had tater tots this morning for breakfast here. <laughs> What so, is it about these tots? We're gonna try it get some. Better than that. You, do you call her? You call her tater tot? She is tater tot. <laughs> she is tater now, oh, look what you guys have! I now. know. Woo! Are you, I feel bad, but you've they already are eaten so these. They so good. All right. Yeah, we had them in the dressing room. And y'all, y'all have an affinity for uh, Sonic tater tots in particular. And these are really good. Mm. Katie, good job. Right. Mm -hmm. But y'all go to Sonic on Valentine's Day, is that right? We did. Yeah, we did. It was the best Valentine's dinner ever. Oh, I love y'all's vibe. Um, okay, wait, wait. We have to announce this because you, we love a good book announce around here, so we have something, a big announcement to make. Okay, are y'all ready? Can you get a drum roll, please? Y'all, Reba has a new book out. It's called Not That Fancy. Oh, look at Rex. <laughs> Simple lessons on living, loving, eating, and dusting off your boots. Uh, this is a little special announcement because it is not out until October 10th. 10th. Uh -huh. So y'all can pre-order it. It's available for pre-ordering it now. But wh why did you decide to write this book now? For and I love this. You know, it's, it's, it was the thing during COVID pandemic. Yeah. What can we do? without having to be out in amongst everybody. That's how long ago we were talking about this. Mm -hmm. Started working on it. I did an autobiography, then I did a an, another little fun book, yeah. Comfort from a Country Quilt, just had little cute stories in it. Mm -hmm. But this one's totally different from the first two books because it has recipes, yeah. it's got pictures they haven't seen before, stories. A lot of the recipes are some of the ones that are in the restaurant in Atoka, yes. Reba's place. And they're tagged on the page. So people so know, know that they can go there and eat them, too. Or they can stay at home and cook the uh, food that's in the restaurant. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And and um, the forwards by Garth Brooks, we have to say. He's a sweetheart. Who we love so much. Yeah. Um, Re Oki. Has Rex read this? Is there any love stories about him? There's some cute stories about him and some great pictures. I'm featured in the book. <laughs> Are you a main character? It's, yes, yes, because of one of my recipes, uh, uh, pecan smoked beer can chicken tacos. He makes those. He's really a good Wait, cook. Wait, pecan smoked beer chicken tacos? Beer can mm -hmm. chicken tacos. That sounds like my perfect recipe. Just but, for that recipe alone, you have to get the book. Yeah, totally. <laughs> do but uh, do you serve that with a little queso? Uh-huh. Do y'all love queso? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. He loves green chilies because we were in New Mexico filming Big Sky. Yeah. And so he... I mean, he loaded up with the green chilies. He absolutely loved them. You know what is so much fun is to see you so in love. I'm telling you, <laughs> he's a great guy to be in I love like her. with. You like her too? <laughs> I just feel like I'm kind of on a date eating <laughs> at Sonic with some tater tots, and I'm loving it. Um, okay, coming up next, y'all, would you go to a wedding if your ex was going to be there with their new partner? Oh, Reba. Yeah. Uh-oh, we're talking about it. That's terrible. We're solving your social dilemmas. Woo! Coming up next. <laughs> <laughs>
actually. Houston to New York City for Reba. <laughs> and we're here with the legend right now. Reba McIntyre is filling in for Hoda. They came to your show this weekend? They did. How much fun is that? It was. We were in Manchester, New Hampshire Thursday, and then Hershey, Pennsylvania Friday, and then played the gardens here in New York City Saturday night. And a lot of those folks were at all three all concerts. All three shows? Oh, my gosh. Your fans are incredible. They okay. Are. Reba, are you ready for this? Yes. It's time for one of our favorite segments. Yes. Hoda and, and Jenna's social dilemmas. Of course you can speak in unison. <laughs> okay, here's the first one. This okay. is going to be tricky. Ready? Right, ready? I'm invited to a good friend's wedding, and I know my ex-boyfriend is attending with his current girlfriend. I told my friend I can't go and see them together. She doesn't understand and said I hurt her feelings. Hmm. What do I do now? Well, pick another friend. She ought to be more sympathetic with you right? on that. I think sometimes when people are getting married, they forget that other people exist. You know what I mean? I know. And if, yeah. I think you should, you should just say... I, it's it's not about you. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it. Sorry, I just can't do it. Yeah. And then walk away. Okay, that's it? That's it. I like how Reba has just, like, cold and fast rules. Yep. Um, okay, here's the next okay, one. Okay, ready? My daughter's mad at me because she says I watch her sister's kids more than hers. Truth is, her sister's kids are much better <laughs> behaved. Is this for my parents? <laughs> <laughs> Did my parents submit this? How can I tell her without hurting her feelings? Well, I think it's gone on too far. If her kids don't don't really uh, yeah. respect her place, her surroundings, her areas, uh, her personal things, uh, that should have been taken care of a long time ago. Okay. Grandma needs to be in there taking over and disciplining. Okay. Is that the Does way this it happens come, are you, I, Well, I'm like, no. No? No, my parents do the opposite where they just, like, you know, they kind of break up the schedules. Like, they're like, oh, sure, iPad? You can have our iPad all morning, and you want ice cream for breakfast? Sure. <laughs> and then we have to kind of wheel retrain. them back, retrain. Yeah. Because I think they think the grandparent's job is just to be as fun as possible. You know, when Mama would take Shelby, uh, she would let him decorate the Christmas tree. You know, he was, like, three or four years old, and, and, it, and the balls, the red balls around the Christmas tree were just all that high, that high. <laughs> Nothing up high at all. So you're right, they do spoil right. them rotten. And then just give them back to you with a grin. Totally. And then you'd have to parent them with the tons of sugar. Yes. But I do think sometimes it's complicated with siblings because I think you think, oh my gosh, does she prefer the other one? Does mom care more about the other one? Then yeah. when it also is probably just, you know, the ages of kids. Like I have kids that are 10, if you can believe it, which is probably the year we first oh, met. Yes. 10, 7, and 3. Oh, and that's a gosh. lot for 75-year-old yeah, parents to handle. Yeah. And my daughter, my sister has one baby who done really move, you know? <laughs> so That is a lot easier. It's not a personal, necessarily. Yeah, you have your kids, you you become a grandparent, yeah. and then you... It's just like I dog set for, for Shelby and Marissa's yeah. uh, when they go out of town sometime. And that's a lot of work, too. Yes. I mean, it's a different scale. Yeah. But you have to be attentive. Yes. Are you hoping to become a grandmother? I would. Yeah. I'd love I was going to say... I could feel that you'd yeah. be excellent. Oh, okay, thanks, here's the thanks. last one. Okay. I went out with a group of former high school friends and acquaintances. One girl spent a long time chatting with my husband. Oh, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Later, she told me what a nice guy he is and asked if they could continue their conversation on a walk together soon. Am I crazy, or does that seem like she's making moves on my hubby? Our marriage is terrific. He's not so much hers, not so much. Oh, she's married, too. What would you have said? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I say no. <laughs> what would happen Can't... if somebody asked Sugar Tot... No, yeah, Sugar, sugar tot. tot. What would happen if somebody asked Sugar Tot to go for a walk? What would you say? I would say, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Not my boyfriend. <laughs> well, if it was your sisters, that'd be okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sisters, yeah. but if a girlfriend was like, hey, Sugar Tot and I had a great conversation, can we continue it on a walk? Why not right here in front of me? <laughs> That's what I'd have to say. <laughs> 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 yeah, I feel like walks are kind of intimate. Uh -huh. I think you should only walk with your significant other. I agree. I agree. Right? All Is three of us can strict? go on a walk. Yeah, or nah. all three of you. Yeah. 
Okay. I'll go with you. That's right. what I'd say. I, get your paws off sugar, Todd. That's what I would say. <laughs> All right, if you got, I just want to say sugar, Todd, as many times as possible. It is cute. It's so cute. All right, if you've got a social dilemma, tell us about it at hodanjenna.com and just hit that connect button. And up next, two home makeover power couples. Oh, we're talking about Ben and Aaron Napier and Dave and Jenny Mars. They're going to share the inspiration behind their incredible hometown takeovers right after this. Okay. HGTV royalty yeah, right here. Boy. <laughs> Coming up tomorrow, Oscar winner and musician Questlove brings the rhythm to Studio 1A. And from the new series White House Plumbers, <laughs> Judy Greer. Plus, Justin Sylvester delivers the scoop. That's all Tuesday on Hoda and Jenna. A diehard HGTV fan, and there's lots of y'all, uh, then you know these two couples very well. Hometowns Ben and Aaron Napier, and fixer to fabulous stars Dave and Jenny Mars. Yay! Yeah. Yay. 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 We're so excited for season two of the hit series Hometown Takeover, and together they gave folks in one Colorado town a big, beautiful surprise. The goal of Hometown Takeover is to take what is already amazing about these small towns, amplify it, show that it's a great place to live and to work and to visit. And that is why... Fort Morgan, Colorado. You're getting a Hometown Isn't that oh so my gosh, cool. that's yeah. wonderful. Um, well, to have y'all both here feels sort of like our own HGTV coronation. Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> they are royalty. Are honorary <laughs> members now of the club. I'm going to tell my daughter that. <laughs> yeah, tell them. Sure. Um, we are so happy y'all are here. And, and you. You, Dave and Jenny, we've only seen y'all on Zoom. Oh. We're so happy to have you here and Thank with you. the queen of country. Oh, my uh, goodness. Our and neighbor. Our neighbor. That's right. Right next door in Oklahoma. Oh, wait, y'all live in, I thought y'all lived in, in Arkansas. We're in Arkansas, but we're right on the border of Oklahoma. Oh, that, that so makes it's, us neighbors. Yeah, that's yeah, right. So yeah, that's neighbors. Right. You bet. I just, I just called it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do I need geography lessons? Yeah, that's it's fine. fine. You can go ahead and tell her. Okay. Go yeah, ahead and tell so her. So my, my farm truck is Reba. Are it's you literally kidding? on the license plate. Oh, love that. Well, what, what inspired you about Reba to name your truck? Well, it's a 98 Z71. If you were driving a Z71 in 1998, you were listening to Reba McIntyre. You sure were. Hopefully. Yeah, I was, and I also had boyfriends that drove, drove exactly. back to yeah, trucks. Exactly. Um, okay, I, I wonder what it's like. We're all from the South, which feels good to have a full Southern couch. Yeah. Um, what does it feel like to take these towns, to find the beauty in some of our small historic towns and make sure that they're, they're realized? Um, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know about this in Atoka. It's, it has been... Honestly, like it started as a game for us. Just to see, like, how far could we take Laurel? How much improvement could we see if we did this and if we did that? And if you got these people involved, then what happens? And how does it change and grow? And it was just for fun. Yeah. We didn't intend to make a TV show about it. HGTV reached out. We made a TV show about it. <laughs> and then, I mean, they're doing a very similar thing in Bentonville. Yeah. And it just, I think, made a lot of sense because we all have a heart for small town yes. America. And I feel like it gets kind of overlooked or miscategorized in pop culture. Yeah. And yeah. we love getting to tell 
the, the real story mm -hmm. of small town America. Well, and, and it does. It gets miscategorized, like you're saying, but I think the reason people watch these shows is because they long for that. They want to get back to that where you're in community yeah. and you're around people that you know. And that front porch living, that, you know, you know, being out yeah. with your neighbors. Yeah. So I, I really believe that's why the shows are successful is people are just drawn to that. Totally. Didn't you love how the community just oh. flocks to you? You absolutely find that camaraderie yes. where everybody wants to be a part so of it. So great. They do. It's like we, we kept saying, we kept using the term ripple effect when we were in Fort Morgan. And it really was like we started this, you know, we did, we couldn't do it all. There's only, there's four of us and we're, so there's so much so and much. we were only there for so much time, right? We were traveling back and forth. And all we of all us. have kids. We have kids yeah. that need us. Work, but we started something and the town just took it and they yes. went and they kept going. And like, that was what was amazing. It's they just, just needed a kickstart. They yeah. did. That's right. It was just, to us, it was like one of those like feel good yeah. projects. Like it reminded you that humanity is good because mm -hmm. there's so much bad out there. Yeah. And this was yeah. like the best of humanity. Yeah, and really the thing was. is there's yeah. the bad is louder than the good. Exactly. There's so, so much so good much. Exactly. everywhere. Good yes. small town America wants somebody to be their voice. Yeah. Right. They want someone to stand up for them and say, no, this is a special way of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's a huge honor. Yeah. Yeah. It is a huge honor, yep. I think, for all yes. of us. Way to, to go. To I know. Um, you yes. know what? Reba, I don't know if y'all know, but Reba has done this and yes. her. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. Oklahoma, she has a great restaurant. Yes. Tell us a little bit about it and what you found it's done for the community. Well, that's exactly what the same thing you guys are mm -hmm. finding out. It's in Atoka, Oklahoma, and it's called Reba's Place. And the, the whole town got so excited. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like adding a little breath of fresh air sure. into the, mm -hmm. the whole town. Mm -hmm. Everybody's redoing places. Yes. It's that ripple. That's it's that ripple exactly. effect. It really yeah. does. Yes. It becomes like infectious. Like one building beautifies, yep. uh -huh. and then the next building, they yep. get new signage. And then the next <laughs> building, they paint the trim. Everybody can't make a huge yeah. facelift, total makeover, right. but everybody starts doing the improvements that they can. Right. Yeah. And that makes a town feel alive it, again. It does. Yeah. does. Y'all are doing such important work. Can we just mention, we're sorry about your shoulder surgery, but I follow you on Instagram. <laughs> Looks like she was an incredible nurse. <laughs> Helen well, is Helen. the real nurse. <laughs> She's five. Oh. She, uh, so uh, she, the other night, she put a blanket over my shoulder because she said it'd make At her- At bedtime, he was talking to her. Better. Yeah. And, uh, but then when it was time to actually go to bed, she said she needed it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, wait, but that's my blanket, Dad. Yeah, she can give you that magic for a while. Yeah, for a little bit. Little girls, also, they have the magic. She put uh, some Moana and some Frozen stickers. Oh, yeah, the stickers. His, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Band-Aids. They were Band-Aids. Band my own, um, I just called Barely them my own now. count as a Band-Aid. <laughs> Moana my own, uh, is magic. Yes. yes. So hopefully that yeah. worked. Yeah. Healing magic. Huge. Huge. All right, y'all stay right there, okay? Because Ben, Aaron, Dave, and Jenny, they're going to show us some DIY custom creations to add a personal touch to your living spaces right after this. Thank you. I know. with home makeover pros, Ben and Aaron Napier and Dave and Jenny Mars. The couples tackle renovations in Fort Morgan, Colorado for the new season of Hometown Takeover. And today they're showing us how to recreate some of custom decor that was featured on the show. Reba, yeah. do you like DIY? Yeah. You, do, oh, you do crafts at home? No. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> like but I love like to, to see how her. everybody yeah. knows yeah. it. Yeah. We all like, think we all like these things. I'll do it, which I never will. Right. It's yes. fine. Yeah. Um, okay, so you guys have made this incredible bar. Talk to okay. us about this DIY project. Okay, so this is actually um, inspired by something that we built when we were in Fort Morgan. Okay. Uh, we made a a cash wrap, actually, like the countertop for one of the stores that we made over. And oh, pretty. It, so Fort Morgan is right near the railroad station. Yep. There's a railroad going, a uh, railway, railroad going yeah. through. Yeah, one of Where, the two. You yeah. know, yeah. train. There's a train. <laughs> <laughs> so we use the railroad ties. So Dave yeah. built it. Go ahead, baby. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty simple. Like, you can see over here, like, there's no right, no wrong way to do it. Yeah. We thought a bar was appropriate for today, but yes. it's literally taking timbers, setting timbers together. You can use construction adhesive if, if you want to. Does I mean, wait, does construction adhesive is just like a really intense glue, right? It is. It is. Yeah. Okay. And you don't have to. You can do it like this where you can disassemble and reassemble. But mm -hmm. um, the just construction adhesive them. makes it a little more permanent. But, yeah, it's just it's building blocks. It's all what we oh. all loved as little kids. Totally. Um, it looks like big Jenga. Yes. It does exactly. Look like big Jenga. Yes. This is indoor or outdoor, we should point out, right? Yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Um, and you also created this really cute. Tell us sign. how yeah. you did the this. Mars right? bar. Love it. If well, can tell. okay, it's down stencil. here. Yes. Oh, here we are. Yeah. Okay. This is stencil. Jenny's I get expertise. Down here? Yes. Yeah, I'm not really. See, it's funny because I'm not really a stenciler, but I did it. Yeah. Okay. You know how? <laughs> because this is this is the trick. I should not. Wait, did you make this stencil? Look at this. You go to your like office supply store, and this is just an adhesive. And you have them printed off, and then you stick it on. I mean, is that really brilliant? That's so a game they changer. print it with these letters, so yes. you don't need to make it per perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, and cool. so, the, and then you just use your roller, and you go over, you know, over the letters. And this adhesive is so nice because then it doesn't move, right? When you go over the oh, letters, yeah, so imagine. Stuck. Stuck. And if anyone you know. has ever seen Jenny Mars write or draw, it's I'm not awful. An, I'm not <laughs> so an artist. You really have to go. <laughs> Terrible. To get it printed. My kids are make fun of me all the time. I can I can make a mean palm tree. But that's it. A okay. oh, you mean palm exact tree? I can draw a palm oh. tree. Oh. That's the only thing Did I can do. Did you learn that as a kid? 100%, yeah. Yes. So I have a good Christmas tree. I, yeah, see, I understand see? it. So the stencil saves the day. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and you guys right. are making some other signs yeah. down yeah, there. Yeah, we're going to A version of the park signage that we made in Fort Morgan. We used. That's uh, wow, that's so pretty. Where yeah, are we going to hang the laser? Yeah. Yeah. We but, engraved uh, ours, but you can take, you know, there's contact paper underneath here. You, I mean, not contact paper, carbon, carbon paper. paper. Yeah. You trace it out, all right, and it shows up then. I didn't actually trace it. I'm not yeah. going to show you that. But then taking a wood burner, and I'm Carving one armed here. So, yeah, be uh, careful. <laughs> this is hard. I like your bracelet, too. I Thank know. you. So you see here, we got Uday. <laughs> Uday. <laughs> But you just take it and... and Car wow, burn it. Burn yeah. it in there. It smells good. Yeah, it smells good. <laughs> and you can get Love this it. at any craft supplies. Yeah, they oh, sell these oh, everywhere. Oh, yeah. how cool. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Um, okay, let's just run down because we don't have much time to see these picnic benches. I oh, love yes. to see the picnic. I mean, this is something y'all did in Colorado as well. You just yep. painted these beautiful designs on any of these picnic tables. Right. Here's the picture. It, it, um, so and I literally, again, you use tape to create a stencil yes. this yes. time. And it's sort of, it's like a Chippendale handrail pattern. How cute is this? But Love when it. you're working on a public space, a park mm -hmm. in your town, painting fun, colorful patterns like this, these are easy to update when they get scratched and totally. worn. Paint is you the biggest paint over it again. Uh, urban renewal thing we use. Really? Yeah, yeah. it is. It well, and how difference. cool for kids to probably get involved, too. Yes. Yes. Absolutely, yes. You made it to where you could just paint it on. All right. Exactly. Thank you, guys. We want to spend all day with you, but you can catch <laughs> the second season of Hometown Takeover next Sunday night at 8 p.m. on HGTV. And coming up, just what every picnic table needs, some cold beverages. Oh, yes. <laughs> We're making some mocktails and cocktails straight off the menu at Reba's right oh. after this. Yeah.
Today we're mixing it up with someone Reba knows very well. Laura Johnson, a mixologist and bar manager at Reba's Place in Oklahoma. Yeah, and Laura's going to be showing us how to make three of the specialty cocktails from the menu at our Atoka restaurant. Okay, hi, Laura. I am so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, my gosh, we're so excited. So we're going to start with kind of a springy summer mocktail, right? Yes, yes. And I love mocktails because they're good for, you know, in the morning, in the afternoon, Sunday or Monday. And, <laughs> and also it's good for everybody. Okay, so tell us what we do here. Okay. What's so, this one called? The trick with this one is to have fresh strawberries. So if you are at home and maybe the strawberries are going bad, this is a perfect time to blend them. And we're going to add a little bit of agave, which we already have in here. Go yeah. ahead and put four ounces of fresh strawberry. And we always want a little bit of acidity, so right? So this is lemon. A little Ooh, bit I of love lemon. that. That's right. And then now... This is what we do. We're going to shake fast, we're going to shake hard, and we're going to shake with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> see why are you so popular yes. at the restaurant? Oh my gosh, I can totally <laughs> see fun. it. Okay, so then, and, and then if you take it, it uh oh, it's hard. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Jenna, yes, I got thank it. Thank you. Okay. And then you just All pour right. it over. That's right. We're, we're going to go ahead and do this right here, really quick. How beautiful. Okay. And I love the colors, too. Now, we're going to top it off with ginger beer to add some zest. And then we wow. want to have a Sounds beautiful delicious. crown. How, what's the best way to do, put the crown on top? Do you do that first or last? Yes. Or? Well, you know, we're on live TV, so we missed that. We don't talk about it. Yeah, it's so okay. We're going to so have... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a yes. sip and move on to the Perfect. next one. Here you go. Here you go. Okay, okay show us what we're making next. It's a lime okay. stone well, we gap. drink. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, <laughs> this, this one is very close to my heart, but it's closest to Reba's. This is your favorite cocktail. This is called... Old-fashioned. Yes. yes. Old-fashioned from Limestone Gap. Mm, how cool. Right. It's our take, uh, a Reva's Place twist. Limestone Gap is where Reva's <coughs> branch um, is and also where her daddy grew, right? Yep. Yeah. Grew up. Yeah. Okay. Now tell so, us what's in it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Reba's going to come back. I hate, like, by the way, they say that you don't get anything in your throat on live TV, but that's not true. <laughs> it happens to me all the time. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Here we go. So... In our ranches in southeastern Oklahoma, oh, cool. we brand cattle. Now we're going to brand an ice cube for you. So you, you can just are? buy that thing online? Oh, no. This is just for Reba. Do you want Reba's water, please. Reba? Okay, Reba. Somebody get Reba some water. We'll, we'll keep going. She, you she, found she's it. She's going to need some. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So I went to every cupboard. <laughs> she's been looking in the kitchen. <laughs> this is a fake kitchen is the problem. Not really. It's real. Are you okay? Okay. Does anybody got a cough drop? All right. Go ahead. We're good, Sorry. We're good. We're going to add two ounces of your favorite bourbon. Okay. And this is real important. It's the cinnamon simple. That's going to add flavor to the bourbon. Okay. And a couple of orange bitters. And then you are going to just oh, beautiful. stir, stir, stir while you're branding at the same time. Here we go. And then sometimes you're like, well, when do I stop stirring? Yes. You stop stirring when your hands are a little bit cold, 18 to 20 yes. times. Here we go. Oh, look at that brand. Stack. Oh, look at that. Look at oh, the oh, my gosh. It's beautiful. How cool. Okay. okay. <laughs> really quickly, we got to get yes, to the, this last. Okay. Oh. So then you, and then you garnish it really yes. beautifully. Yes. Sorry. We wanted more time. No, no, no. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, this is fun. This is called strain juice because when you're drinking it, sun shining on you all the time. Okay. okay. So here we go. We have fresh pineapple juice. Yes. A little bit of lemon. I love lemon okay. and everything. And orange agave. Uh, excuse me, orgit syrup, and that's almond syrup is going to bring... Is that this? No, that's, okay. that's gin. So normally, right, we have spirits at the oh. bottom. We're twisting it up. Here we go. And <clears throat> it's going to look like this, okay? It's beautiful. Wait, why is the gin purple? You dyed it? No, I didn't. It's, oh. it's what um, the brand looks like. Oh, there looks is like. purple gin. Yeah. Okay, that's very, very cool. Here we go. Add it, it on looks, top. Here you go, you do that. Oh, okay, cool. And it doesn't mix. It just stays. It's like a Mardi That's Gras gorgeous. drink. And it looks so good. It's so very easy tropical. to make as well. Very beautiful. Laura, you're the best. Thank you. Um, Laura, and everybody get to, to Reba's. Thank you. Everybody get to Reba's. Oh, cheers. Atoka, cheers. Oklahoma. Cheers. Here's, Here's to Reba's place. Here's to Reba's. Thanks, Laura. Thank you, Thank Laura. You. Thank you. To get these drink recipes, go to today.com slash food. And up next, need a little help finding happiness. The optimism doctor. She's in right after this. Yeah. You know who doesn't mean that? Laura. <laughs>
Okay, Reba, are you ready to go on a happiness hunt? <laughs> Heck yeah, sounds good to me. <laughs> I know, you're pretty positive <laughs> anyway, but we are so excited to bring in the optimism doctor, psychologist Deepika Chopra. She's going to make us a priority to find joy in our lives, and she's answering some viewer questions. Deepika, it's so nice to have you here. It's so good to be here. I'm so happy to be here. Okay, you say that optimism is not necessarily something that you're born with, right? Like it's a, it's a muscle you have to work. Yes, I think so many people think, well, I'm either optimistic or pessimistic. It's genetic and there is a genetic component to it. It's very small. It's about 20, 25%. The rest is a muscle we have to learn and sharpen that muscle. Oh. Oh. And so what can we do? I mean, yeah. like what if we wake up feeling a little grumpy? How do you get that turned over real quick when you well, get out of bed? Good news is there's a ton of things we can do. And what m sort of my passion is, is really helping people to hone in on skills that they already have as humans. Mm. And so something I like to do, because I wake up on the wrong side of the bed all the time. <laughs> uh, I always like to tell people I'm not the most optimistic person, even though I'm known as the optimist. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I have to work on it. But yeah. one thing that research really does say is that however your mood is in the first half of the day greatly impacts your mood for the remainder of the day. So oh, I always make sure I start I the morning off with something that works for me. And I have something that I do that works for me and I, it's called wake up and dance. And I just put on music Ooh, the first thing that? I do. And I dance, even if it's for like 20 seconds. Uh -huh. Yes, okay, that's a great Love idea. It. And it. you gotta find whatever your wake up <laughs> yes. and dance is. Okay, some viewers need your help. First up, we have Juliet. Hi, I'm Juliet from New York, and I was wondering what to do when you find yourself easily thrown off by the negativity in the world. How can we remain positive despite being highly sensitive to the world around us? Yes, such a good question. And I first want to say that that is so normal. We are empathic creatures as yeah. humans. You know, we feel and we feel hard. Um, and so that's completely normal. But I do think it's important we have to develop these skills to maintain our own emotional state you know, at the same time as being exposed to what's going on. And one of the things that I like to tell clients to do, and it sounds kind of counterintuitive for an optimism doctor to say this, but I say schedule in worry time into your schedule. And so instead of worrying all day, when a worry comes to mind, I'm like, no, I've scheduled that for my three o'clock, oh, 10 wow. minutes to worry. And so when a worry comes up all day, I <laughs> say, oh, I'm, I'm putting that to my three o'clock. Okay. And so for 10 minutes at three o'clock is my worry time. And we're all gonna worry. It's natural to worry. It's a human, yeah. it's a human and quality. That's of very it. interesting. Yeah, okay. Schedule so, some mi mindful worry time. Uh, and worry time. Okay. And then Christy in Pennsylvania has a question for you. Mm -hmm. My question is, the term toxic positivity is quite popular right now. How do we best focus on the good um, without stepping into toxic positivity? Mm. Yeah, it feels like it's kind of a, a buzzy word yes. we're hearing. What do you think? Another great question um, and something I actually love talking about. Uh, toxic positivity, you know, it, it, I think that optimism is often known as you know, it's about being positive all the time, but really it's not. It's about resiliency and about sort of being curious about how you authentically feel. And the one term that just drives me crazy is good vibes only. I cannot stand that term because it's basically saying that we only have time yeah, and space for feel, your good feelings yeah. and that's toxic. And so a better way to approach that is sort of to allow yourself to have an authentic feeling while at the same time um, making space for hope. Yeah, I love that. Making space for hope. Okay, we only have a few seconds, but you have these incredible cards. Yes. Um, which are so much fun. And this one says, name just one thing that makes you proud of yourself, anything that comes to mind. Even if it does not seem like it, you are accomplishing so much every single day and truly have so many things to pick from. Just pick one. Wow. I know, do you have one? One thing that I'm yes, really proud yes. of? Proud of my friends and family. Oh. That's two things, That's but two yeah. Yeah. Things. I was gonna say, I mean, didn't you just perform at, at yeah, MSG too? And the Hollywood, you have so many to choose from. Yeah, but I love that. I love about finding something that you love about yourself. It feels like it's the way to feel good and grateful. We often don't celebrate our own wins and that's yeah. a hallmark of optimism. Awesome. And so. Thank you, thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for the tips. Thank that's you wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And Appreciate we'll be back it. Right after this. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you. These are very nice.
Reba for hanging with me today. Oh, thank you for having me. And for bringing oh, the cocktails. Y'all be sure to get to Reba's, please. The please. restaurant, it's amazing. We have fun. All right, we had a blast. Okay, tomorrow, Questlove will be here, plus actress Judy Greer. And Justin Sylvester. Oh, Justin Sylvester will be Justin here Sylvester. with the scoop. Yes, he will. Okay, we'll see y'all. What Bye -bye. a great Monday. I loved it. Bye. <laughs>today all day i don't know about you but i love pecan pie but why is it we only get to eat them on thanksgiving well sama dada and her baking buddy chef samantha have reimagined the classic holiday pie for any time of the year sama is serving up vegan mini pecan pies that make a perfect sweet snack and then samantha makes a stunning maple nut tart that is truly a work of art it's all coming up next on hashtag cooking so we're just oh, stirring. Oh gosh, Emma, it smells so good already. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Don't you want this in a candle? I do. <laughs> Someone's gonna start making candles. I'm gonna start making pecan <laughs> pie candles, baby. <laughs>
<laughs> Someone's gonna start making candles. I'm gonna start making pecan pie <laughs> candles, baby. <laughs> Before you add the almond flour and the flaxseed meal, you wanna make sure your mixture is reducing a little bit. So you'll notice that it's bubbling up. It's kind of pulling away from the sides of the pan and then that's a really good time for you to add your flaxseed meal and your almond flour. And it looks like we're there. I'm using an almond flour here just to thicken up the mixture okay. a little bit. And I'm also going to use some ground flaxseed, otherwise known as flaxseed meal. Do you use this when you I make I do yourself? sometimes. I have a dear friend that's vegan, so I, I try to use flaxseed for oh. her egg replacements. Flaxseed meal <laughs> adds some fiber, and we love a fiber <laughs> moment here. We're stirring this up so the mixture gets nice and thick. The almond flour and the flaxseed meal are really what's going to help us get it there. Does it smell good? It smells so good. You all wish you were here. You wish you were here to smell this. <laughs> but you're going to make it at home, so it's going to be great. Uh, yeah, you are going to make it at home. Please. You'll love it. Finally, for my filling, I'm going to add my crushed pecans. You can just crush them with your hands, super easy. But I like adding this because it adds texture to the filling, and my crust is actually going to be more on the cookie side of the spectrum rather than a traditional buttery mm -hmm. crust. So it's nice to have some weight to the filling. Yum. Crush it up. It's okay if you've got some big or small pieces. You love texture here. Your tart. <laughs> it's all about texture. It's all about texture. I'm so excited to get there. See how it's kind of thickening up? Thickening up. I'm going to take this off the heat. Incorporate those pecans, get it off the heat, and then get to work on my crust. If we don't eat it first. If we don't eat it all <laughs> first. I'm actually going to use flax eggs to help bind the crust. I know flax eggs don't sound very glamorous, but they are super important in vegan and plant-based cooking. So I'm using two flax eggs here, which means I'm going to use two tablespoons of ground flaxseed meal, and I'm going to add five tablespoons of water to it. Make sure you give it a nice stir. I'm going to let my flax eggs hang out. They can just take a chill pill. And now we can work on the rest of my crust ingredients. Yum. <laughs> Sam's excited. Okay, so I've got my melted and cooled coconut oil and my almond butter here. That's gonna serve as a nice base for my crust. I'm gonna add my almond butter first into my bowl. I'm using a creamy almond butter here. Yum. So I want it to be super basic, kind of a nice cookie crust. Now I'm gonna add my melted and cooled coconut oil. This is gonna be like my butter for the crust. Mm. It's gonna be really delicious and rich. I'm gonna whisk this together so it becomes nice and smooth. And then, to sweeten this crust up, I'm gonna add my favorite, coconut sugar. This is gonna complement the coconut sugar that's in my filling too. So good. Now I've combined my almond butter, my coconut oil, and my coconut sugar. At this point, our flax egg should be nice and thick. As you can see, pretty gelatinous. I know that's also not a cute word, but it's true. It's gonna help us bind. Can I see, Sama? Yes. So you can see wow. how it's kind of thick. Look at that. So fast. Sort of like a gel. Yeah. So it's gonna be nice because this is what's gonna help bind our crust instead, instead of, of an egg. For my dry ingredients, you know how I said it's gonna be sort of like a cookie, mm -hmm. cakey crust? The almond flour is really what's gonna help it yeah. get there. And I'm using almond flour and coconut flour, which I like to do in tandem because coconut flour is so absorbent, almond flour is so dense, so I find it makes a really nice pairing. Smart. Whisk that up nicely. And here's where it gets fun, Sam. <laughs> we get to combine our wet and dry ingredients. I'm gonna just put this straight into here. It smells so good. Already. Right, really already? Does. Sometimes I find that this needs a little bit of help to come together, which mm -hmm. is why paired. Got some almond milk. You can use any non-dairy milk you want, but it's just gonna help the crust become nice and smooth. So in my crust, I would use butter, lots of butter, <laughs> and flour, and granulated sugar. Yeah. As you can see, this dough can be really sticky, so make sure you're armed with a spatula <laughs> to help your whisk out. You know it though, at home you'd use your fingers. At home, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do use my fingers when I'm at home. You know what? Are we over it? I'm just gonna <laughs> get in there. Just gonna get in the, there. They're the best tool you have. 
You always say when you bake to trust your body, <laughs> which is what I love about you. Can you explain this to me a bit more? Is that your baking philosophy to trust That's your body? That's my baking philosophy. That's why you use your hands, right? So you, yep. you feel it and you smell it and you, you know, use all your senses to sort of figure oh. out what to do next. We really are hashtag I baking know. buddies. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like my crust is nice and sticky, well incorporated, which is gonna be perfect because now all we're gonna do is transfer it to my little mini muffin tin. You know why I like your dough, Summer? Tell me, Sam, why you like <laughs> you my can dough. Snack on them because there's no raw eggs. <laughs> you know what? It's I'm always a cookie dough lover, so. It's always a bit of a question on whether or not the dough will make it to the oven <laughs> for me. So now I've added my crust into my little mini muffin tin. All I'm gonna do is use my finger or my knuckle to create a little bed for my filling to sit snugly on top of, like so. And it's really easy and fun too. You just mold it to the sides of the little mini muffin tin. We're using a little mini cookie scoop to control how much dough we add into the pan so that it's nice and even. I wish I could help you. I know, I miss you so much. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention, I did grease this pan with coconut oil, and you wanna make sure you do that. Super important, because you don't want the pies to stick to the pan. That would be really sad. That would be <laughs> so sad. Now that all of my little cute mini crusts are done, I'm gonna add the filling. Just remove this bowl aside. As you can see, this filling has just gotten so thick and it's delicious and it's like a toffee. I'm gonna add it straight into my crust. And it's gonna fit nice and snug in there. Like, Cutie. they're like little mini tarts, I know. They're so <laughs> cute. You don't wanna overfill the filling because it will bubble up in the oven when it bakes. So make sure you just level it out but this guy definitely needs a little more. <laughs> and see how nice it is that this filling is so textured. It's gonna be so delicious when it caramelizes and cooks in the oven. Mm. Finally, just for aesthetics, <laughs> I'm gonna add a pecan on top of each of these just to finish it off. Great. I can't wait for you to try this, <laughs> Sam. My little cute vegan mini pecan pies are done, so now they're ready for a little journey in the oven, going in at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. Yay, now that it's in the oven, I'm gonna clean this up, and Sam, it's time for you to make your tart. It's my turn. I'm so excited. Get my ingredients. Cool. Classic butter crust is the base for many delicious desserts. 
It takes a bit of practice to master, but it's worth it. I'm going to show you how to make it. To start, combine flour, sugar, and salt in a food processor and pulse to combine. Now, add the cold butter and pulse until the mixture resembles a coarse meal. Then add three tablespoons of water and pulse the dough until it starts to come together. You can add a little more water if you need to. Tip the dough onto a piece of plastic wrap and then shape it into a flat disc. Pop this disc into the fridge and let it chill for at least one hour or up to two days. On a lightly floured surface, roll the dough into a 10 inch circle. Transfer the dough to a 9 inch fluted tart pan and gently press the dough into the edges. For a nifty little trick, run the rolling pin over the top to trim the edges. Pop the tart shell into the freezer for 15 minutes. Before baking the tart, line the frozen dough with parchment paper and fill the inside with pie weights. This step will help our crust keep its gorgeous shape. Bake the shell at 375 for 15 minutes. Remove the weights from the tart shell and bake again until lightly golden, another 10 to 15 minutes. Now your beautiful crust is ready to be filled. Okay, Sam, you're making this delicious nut tart. I need all of the details. How did you come up with it? <laughs> well, it's based on a classic pecan pie, but I developed this recipe for my dad because he is a lover of nuts. He loves nuts more than anyone in the world, and every time I go to visit him, he wants me to bring something nut-related. So that's how this came up. Cute. What are we doing first? I think the first thing I'm going to do is chop my chocolate. So this is 
uh, bar of dark chocolate. I am not a chip girl. I know that you are. I just, I find that you can buy better chocolate when it's in bars and you can control the size and it melts a little better. It's nice to have texture too, right? Totally, and I like having all different varying sizes of chocolate. Mm. So every bite's a little different. Ooh. So now that's chopped, I'm gonna set that aside and my filling is super easy. We'll just start with three eggs. And look how nice and bright those yolks are. Can you tell us why you crack your egg on the counter, not the bowl? It's easier not to get any pieces of shell in your bowl when you crack it there on we go. the counter. Little pro tip. <laughs> so I'm just whisking this first. And you want to make sure to whisk it really well, because otherwise you'll have these little pieces of egg white in your mixture, which is not pretty. Not cute. So we'll mix this really well, and then we'll just add a couple more ingredients. We're going to add some melted butter. Mmm, <laughs> delish. Yum. Delish. A little bit of brown sugar. And just like you, I'm using maple syrup. I'm from New England, so I feel very strongly about maple syrup. Very on brand. <laughs> <laughs> so traditionally, pecan pie is made with corn syrup, mm -hmm. which is totally fine if that's what you want to use. I prefer using maple syrup because it has such a delicious flavor. Mm -hmm. And why not add more flavor? And then now my filling is done, I'm just going to add my nuts. So I'm for this tart. I am using three different kinds of nuts, because that's what my dad would like. I'm using pecans, walnuts, and hazelnuts. You could use any mix of nuts that you want. I'm also keeping them whole. I'm not chopping them because, number one, I'm lazy. <laughs> and number two, I really like the big pieces of nut. I think it looks really beautiful and just crunchy and nice. And you know, with hazelnuts, they usually come with these little brown papery skins. Mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure you remove that before you bake it. You can do that by just putting them in the oven, 375 for about eight to 10 minutes until the, you'll see the flaky skin sort of starts to come off the nut. And then you throw it in a dish towel and rub all those skins off. You can also buy them like that if you wanted so, to. So why would we be removing the skins? The skins actually are a little bit bitter. Mm -hmm. So you really don't want, I mean a little bit is kind of okay, but you don't want a lot of that in your final part. Yeah, we don't want anything bitter. All right, so that all goes. Woo! And you're not chopping your nuts. No, I'm not. I, <laughs> I just think it looks really cute when they're all big and luscious. Texture, baby. Texture. <laughs> we love it. Okay, so that just gets tossed together. This super, is super simple. It's so easy. I mean, pecan pie is the easiest pie there is. But you know why I do it in this tart shell? I want the nut filling and the crust to sort of be equal players. You want like an even ratio. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I think I crust that. is really important, so. Oh, I'm there for the crust. <laughs> and, of course, we can't forget to add a little bit of salt. You have to season all your sweets, just like you season your savory food. It really brings out all the flavor. <laughs> In the chocolate goes. Yum. Could you use a different kind of chocolate? Oh if yeah, you wanted? absolutely. Okay. So this is bittersweet chocolate, okay. which is my fave. But you could certainly use milk if you prefer. Okay, this looks nice and well mixed. There's no little bits of egg that haven't been incorporated. It's perfect. So now I'm going to go on to my crust. Now I think I know the answer to this question. I think I know <laughs> what you're going to say. But could you potentially use a store-bought pie crust? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Is it time? It's time. <laughs> All right, so I'm adding this beautiful filling. Look at that. I mean, come it, on. It already looks pretty delicious. Caramelly, those big chunks of chocolate, I nuts. Love, I love the plot twist, chunks of nuts. Chunks of nuts? Yes. <laughs> it's like the name of a band. You gotta make sure to sort of spread out your nuts a little bit. Mm -hmm. And be really careful not to let any of the not to let any of the filling go over the sides okay. because that will make it stick to your tart pan, mm -hmm. which is a real bummer. It belongs in a museum for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, artiste. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Well, as you know, I'm also a food stylist. <laughs> so you want to make sure to spread everything out so that you don't have chunks of nuts on one side. You know, you want it all to bake really evenly and you want every person to get every kind of nut in every nice. slice. Okay, I think she's ready for the oven. So I'm gonna ask you to do the honors. 
I would be honored to do the honors. <laughs> 375 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. You'll see, it's like puffed all the way through and golden brown. I'm on it. I'm on it, Sam. This kitchen smells, smells amazing. incredible. So good. We made it. We took the journey. <laughs> I'm so excited to try this. Tell me how would I serve this? Right. You got to get it out of that pan first. So I have a little trick to show you. Yay. You need a big can. Okay. And now you're going to pick it up and put it on top of the can. And if everything works according to plan, the sides will just fall off. I'm Watch. stressed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can do it. All right. So I'm gonna put it on top of the mm -hmm. can. Put the can in the center. <gasps> Magic. A Magic. Magic. Okay. Now you can put it Beautiful. in your plate. Look at that though. Looks good. Looks so good. <laughs> All right, going on my little plate. Okay. Like Moment it. of truth, Sam. <gasps> mm. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of like a cookie now that I'm looking at it. The Met called. <laughs> it wants your tart. You're cute. Delicious. See, look at all of those whole nuts. I feel like it makes it look so pretty. Mm. So cool. It's very nut forward. <laughs> nut forward. Okay. It's my turn, Sama. Oh, these look so cute. Oh, they come out so cleanly. Yay! They're so, this would be such a good little party snack. They're mini, they bite size. So, you know. You know what I'm really into? This beautiful caramelized mm -hmm. moment, as you would say. Oh, it's a caramelized <laughs> moment. Okay, I'm gonna pick one that has like all that yummy. I wanna see what it looks inside. <gasps> Look at that. That looks good, Sama. Thank you. Yum. I hope you like it. <laughs> mm. Good? Mm-hmm. I'm so happy. The coconut sugar is so yum. Right? Mm. That's delicious, Sama. Thank you, Sam. It's like rich and chewy and crunchy and coconutty. And How do you feel about the cookie crust? I'm into it. Okay. I'm good. really, I love how thick it is. Because it's like. It's luscious. Mm -hmm. Luscious. <laughs> That's what it is. Luckily, there's a huge piece of that delicious chocolate <laughs> right here. This is what I'm going for. I mean, Tim. 
<laughs> you shouldn't have. <laughs> but you did. For you. I mean, mm. the chunky nuts are like the perfect complement to the melted chocolate. And the crust? Butter. Butter is good. I mean, oh my god. <laughs> this makes me really happy that we're baking buddies. Now we can be eating buddies. Mm. I have a request. Tell me. Can we bake together more often? All the time. Amazing. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Sam, I think we have to document this moment so we can remember <laughs> to do it more often. Of course. And take a picture, or a few. You <laughs> can never have too many. All right, ready? Yes. Okay, we need to get the, the tarts Easy. in there. Yeah, oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> good. Yay! Sam, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. You are my OG baking buddy, <laughs> and I'm just going to continue to enjoy this. Yeah, me too, bro. Myself. Let's do it. I love us. Ditto. I mean, we're so good. <laughs> we're so talented. So talented. Super modest, super humble, but this is really good. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Thank you. <laughs> mm, mm. Today all day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is sharing her favorite ways to use up any oats that you have lying around. First up, she's baking an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie that's healthy enough to eat for breakfast. Then, it's homemade granola with a savory twist. If you like oatmeal raisin cookies, I will not judge you. But an oatmeal raisin cookie is simply not a cookie I want to be a part of. Personally, speaking for myself, I will opt for chocolate every single time. I know you have a little canister of oats sitting at the back of your pantry that maybe you're neglecting a little bit. But instead of teaching you how to make a traditional bowl of oatmeal, which I already know you know how to make, I'm gonna show you how to hashtag upgrade your oats. Today we're gonna to be making my favorite oatmeal chocolate chip cookies with some added fun, coconut, and then a really easy savory granola. How's that for a plot twist? Let's get started. Oats, they are having a moment. They're everywhere these days, and for good reason. Oats are super versatile, they're really nutritious, and there's so much you can do with an oat to make it a star. But there are a lot of different varieties, so I thought I'd walk you through a few of my favorites. Welcome to my kitchen classroom. On today's agenda, Oats 101. These little guys are oat groats. I know, it's not the cutest name, but these are oats in their least processed form. They have a lot of fiber. And these are what they look like before they've been rolled out. They do take a bit longer to cook though, about 30 to 40 minutes, but they have a really nice nutty and chewy texture, which I find is really nice for a salad, similar to a barley or a farro. Next up, we've got my steel cut oats. These are simply oat groats that have been cut into this pin head shape. Now, steel cut oats take about 20 to 30 minutes to cook. They've got a nice chewy texture, making it perfect for a slow weekend morning when you wanna enjoy a bowl of oatmeal. Next up, we have got my oat MVP, rolled oats or old fashioned oats. These oats have been steamed and then rolled out into that iconic oat shape. These take only 10 to 20 minutes to cook, not too long, not too short, but they also have this really nice springy light texture without being too chewy. I find that old fashioned oats are perfect for just about anything. An oatmeal chocolate chip cookie, some granola, I use them so much in my kitchen. And finally, we have our instant oatmeal. These are the most processed form of oats from our little lineup here, and what you commonly find in a little brown packet destined for your microwave. These are very mushy in texture, so I don't really cook with them or bake with them, but if you only have about one to three minutes in the morning to cook them, these are the oats for you. I won't judge you if you use them. When you're always stocked with oats, guess what you'll never run out of? Oat milk. Because that's right, you can make it yourself, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. All you need to make your own oat milk at home is some old-fashioned oats, some cold water, 
and a good quality nut milk bag. When you're making your own oat milk, make sure to use old fashioned oats. Steel cut is gonna be a little bit too coarse and instant is gonna be too mushy, so we don't wanna do that. Now, I'm just gonna grab a measuring cup for my old fashioned oats and measure some out. Old fashioned oats secured. My blender is my BFF and this oat milk comes together just in your blender. I'm gonna add my old fashioned oats to my blender. We've got some cold water, make sure it's cold. We don't want any warm water here because the oats will get slimy. Nobody likes a slimy oat milk. Adding this in my blender. And finally, this is optional, but not if you're me, because I like a little touch of sweetness, a little bit of maple syrup. You can totally use a couple medjool dates too if you'd prefer. Just a touch. You can even add a little dash of cinnamon too if you're feeling like you want to live on the edge today with your oat milk. Now, all I'm going to do is blend it. Only 30 to 40 seconds. We don't want to over blend it because the oats will get kind of mushy. Okay, here we go. Oat milk is in our future. We're looking nice and creamy. Now, before I remove this from the blender, just want to show you. You can totally use a cheesecloth to strain, but I'm using a nut milk bag because it's a lot easier. I'm gonna prepare this in my pitcher. Now I'm just gonna pour in my oat milk. We're making oat milk. You just wanna squeeze it a little bit so you get all of that oat milk out. This is precious, we worked hard for this. Okay, we didn't really work that hard for this, but we still wanna get everything out. Look at how creamy that looks too. Like that's some thick oat milk, I love it. And look at how this nut milk bag is catching all of those little pieces of oats. We don't want that in our oat milk. We want that to stay secure in the bag. That's why it's nice to get a good quality nut milk bag, because then it makes it super easy to make your oat milk at home. All right, we're gonna set this aside. See you later. And now we have homemade, creamy, delicious oat milk. This stores well in the fridge for about five days. Make sure you stir it before you drink it because separation is totally normal. I like to use this oat milk in any recipe where I call for a non-dairy milk, whether that be in my chocolate chip cookie pie or even my date crumble bars. So delicious, so creamy. It's even amazing in your coffee. And you know what pairs really well with oat milk? Cookies. Luckily, I've got myself covered because we're gonna make my chocolate chip oatmeal cookies with a little bit of coconut. I'm gonna let this chill while I go grab the ingredients. I have been there and done that with traditional stovetop oatmeal and overnight oats. Plus, I would choose a cookie over those two any day. So to solve my persistent desire for cookies at all hours of the day, 
I'm going to show you how to make my favorite oatmeal chocolate chip cookie that's wholesome enough to eat for breakfast. So, let's get to it. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees, and because I love being prepared, I have also lined my pan with some parchment paper. Now, we're going to get to work on the wet ingredients. I'm going to crack my egg in my bowl. Whisk that really nicely. We want no separation between the yolks and the whites. Okay. This looks great. Now I'm going to add a little bit of almond butter. Mixing the egg and the almond butter together really well. All right, this looks smooth and creamy. Now I'm going in with my melted and cooled coconut oil. Straight in there. We are actually going to be adding some shredded coconut into these cookies, so I find that the coconut oil really complements that super well. It's also a nice butter replacement in these cookies too. Mixing everything together. Everyone needs to become friendly. Perfect. Now I'm gonna add some vanilla extract. Can't have my cookies without it. And finally, for my sweeteners, maple going in. Maple adds that really warm and almost breakfasty taste to these cookies. And then we're adding some coconut sugar. Coconut sugar and maple syrup are my favorite sweeteners to use together. I find that they complement each other really well. They create this really golden taste in these cookies. Because coconut sugar is really fragrant, it's gonna go really nicely with that coconut oil and that shredded coconut that we're gonna be adding into the cookies later. My wet mixture looks perfect, honestly. I have to give credit to myself. Now, I'm gonna move on to my dry ingredients. For these cookies, I'm using a combination of almond flour and oat flour. If you don't know what oat flour is, get ready to have your mind blown. All it is, is just oats ground up into a blender until you get that fine powder, like a flour. Then we get oat flour. How fun and convenient is that? Easy to make at home, you can also buy it from the store. Oat flour going in. We're having an oat moment with these cookies. We love oats. Gonna also add some almond flour. Almond flour is really dense, oat flour is really light, so I find that they create a really nice combination and a really nice texture in these cookies. Okay, we're gonna whisk that up. Whisking our almond flour and our oat flour together really nicely. And now, because I'm fun, I'm gonna add some shredded coconut. Make sure you buy unsweetened shredded coconut because we've got the sugar already, we don't need to add more into our coconut. Now, for our star, these would not be oatmeal chocolate chip cookies without some oats. So, I'm using old-fashioned or rolled oats here. Oats going in. Time for a little baking powder. And a little pinch of salt. The salt is gonna balance out the sweetness, really bring it out, it's gonna heighten all of those flavors. Whisking everything together nicely, we want a fully incorporated dry ingredient mixture here. Dry mixture taking a journey. Beautiful. I'm gonna fold my dry and wet ingredients together until everyone is fully incorporated. So we wanna make sure we're not seeing any remnants of that flour mixture, right? We want it to be fully incorporated. You'll see how that color changes. Everyone looks really nicely incorporated, really well mixed, thorough. We wanna do a thorough job here. I mean, listen, this is like this is like a bowl of oatmeal, right? This counts, a cookie, an oatmeal cookie, same thing. Okay, this is controversial. I'm gonna put my spatula down for this. If you like oatmeal raisin cookies, I will not judge you, but an oatmeal raisin cookie is simply not a cookie I want to be a part of, personally, speaking for myself. Um, I will opt for chocolate every single time. So, I'm gonna fold in some chocolate chips. 
I measure chocolate chips with my sole, as you can see. I will be saving these to top the cookies with before they go into the oven. I want a few more. I changed my mind. Just a few. Breakfast, anyone? <laughs> okay, we're gonna fold the chocolate in really nicely. And this is a beautiful cookie dough situation I've got here. Okay. Time to make our cookies. Perfect. I'm using a cookie scoop here just to get some nice even cookies. Want them all to be about the same size and then they're gonna cook evenly too. That is a huge chunk of chocolate chips I just got. I'm not mad about it at all. Okay. And I'm just gonna use my fingers just to flatten them down slightly. Not too much, just a little. This one has so many chocolate chips, that's the one I'm going for. I already know this. I've already made up my mind. I like making these cookies at the start of the week because I'm eating them for breakfast. It's kind of nice to have on hand. And even if you have a different breakfast, okay? Even if you're having your eggs or whatever else you eat for breakfast, you can totally have one of these after with a little cup of coffee. How does that sound? Pretty good? I know, because I do it all the time. You know what these remind me of also? Just like a really glam granola bar. Like a granola bar, but like make it a cookie. I've got some extra dough here. I will be baking these off later, but I do want to add a couple extra chocolate chips on top for fun. I went pretty heavy on the chocolate chips and the dough already. And I honestly love that for me. I'm gonna bake these in the oven 10 to 15 minutes until it's nice and golden brown around those edges. I'm so excited to have some oatmeal breakfast cookies after this. Cookies for breakfast, anyone? I mean, look at how textured they are, right? They've got the oats, they've got the chocolate chips, they've got coconut. 
There's a lot going on here. Perfect for breakfast, but also for any time of the day. I'm not gonna you know, say that I can't have this after dinner, because I can. So excited to eat them. And you know what I'm gonna eat them with? Some homemade oat milk, because I'm having an oat moment today. And I'm just gonna have all of the oats. I mean, look at that. So fluffy. You know what this needs? You know what this needs? It needs to be dunked in some oat milk. It just has to happen. Okay. I gotta get my camera out first because this is a perfect photo op. All right, it's taking the plunge. <gasps> oh my God, okay. All right, here we go. I'm so good, I'm just losing cookies everywhere. Okay, I need a sip of oat milk. You might, and no disrespect to your bowl of oatmeal, but you might want to abandon it after you try these cookies. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm being honest, I'm being honest. I'm going in for more. Mmm. Someone hold me back. No, really, someone hold me back. Oh, you thought I was done helping you upgrade your oats? Well, you are mistaken because up next, I have my plot twist savory granola. I'm super excited to make it. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients. When you think of granola, you're probably thinking of those sweet clusters of nuts and oats to top your yogurt. But have you ever thought about a savory version? I know it's a plot twist, but savory granola is one of my favorite snacks. I was inspired to make it by traditional Indian snack mixes, and I cannot wait for you to try it. We want the savory granola to have lots of flavor, so to start, we're gonna make a little olive oil spice mixture. In my bowl, I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil, Olive oil is gonna help us get that nice, crisp, golden color and texture that we really want. Now, for some more flavor, I'm gonna add some coconut aminos. Coconut aminos going straight in there. Coconut aminos are made from the sap of coconut palms, and it's actually very similar in taste to a soy sauce, but it's gluten-free, so if that's important to you, there you go. We always have to have spice. I always have to have spice. I can't live my life without it. So we're gonna add a couple of my favorites. Cayenne. Cayenne is gonna add some heat, some spice. It's gonna really kick this flavor up a notch. Now I'm gonna add some garam masala. The garam masala is a very common Indian spice blend. It contains pepper, cumin, cloves. It's super warming, super fragrant. I love using it in my savory granola. I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. Nothing is complete without a little pinch of salt. 
And now because we have a lot of spice, a lot of flavor, a lot of savory elements going on here, I wanna add a little bit of honey just to balance out that saltiness. I love honey. Just a touch, not too much. That honey is gonna give that really nice, sweet and salty balance that I love so much. Now let's whisk everything together. Make sure it's really well incorporated. We want all of the spice, all of the flavor to be evenly, evenly whisked together. It's pretty potent. <laughs> all right, this is nice and well mixed. Now I'm gonna move on to my dry ingredients. I like using a variety of nuts and seeds here because it's really fun to play with different texture and flavor. Every single nut and seed has a different flavor profile, so it's fun to add them all together and just have a little crunch, a little texture, something different in every bite. So, I'm gonna start with my sliced almonds. I use almonds so much in my kitchen, from almond butter to raw almonds. They're super versatile and I just love the taste. I'm gonna add some raw cashews, super buttery and delicious. Now, we're gonna go for some pecans. Pecan, pecan. I say pecan. In there. I'm gonna add some pumpkin seeds. You can add sunflower seeds here too if pumpkin's not your jam. Pumpkin seeds add that nice green color too. It's kind of pretty. Okay, now we're gonna add some sesame seeds. These are gonna be so delicious when they're nice and toasty in the oven. Mm, I love it. Now, this wouldn't be granola without oats. We cannot have granola without our oats. Adding the oats straight into my mixture. Now we mix them all together. Make sure that you're using raw, unsalted nuts here. We are gonna be roasting them in the oven with some olive oil and spices, so you don't need to buy roasted and salted nuts. Look at how fun and textured this is. So many different colors. And it's about to get a lot of flavor. Time to add my olive oil mixture straight on top of my nuts, seeds, and oats. Leave no spice left behind. Come on, you can do it. Okay. Now we're gonna mix everything together. We want a very well-spiced, savory granola. So every piece has to be coated by some olive oil and spice. It already starts to smell so good, so flavorful. This is such a fun and easy portable snack too. We are looking nice and well mixed. Now it's time for the pan. Make sure you get all of those little resistant oats. They'll have a better life as savory granola. Okay, make sure that you're spreading your granola out really well, really evenly. We want everyone to have personal space, some room to breathe. This way we can ensure a nice and even crisp bake. We are ready for the oven. I'm gonna bake this 45 to 50 minutes at 325 degrees in the oven. Make sure you toss it every 10 minutes or so to ensure that it gets nice and golden brown. Look at my gorgeous golden savory granola. I've let this cool completely. Make sure you let it cool for at least 15 minutes. First of all, it's a little bit too hot to handle as it comes out of the oven. And when you cool granola, it crisps up as it cools. I'm gonna store this in my cute little container, which I promise I can get the lid off because I'm strong. There we go. I love to store these in little mason jars or little jars like this, just so it's nice to have a snack on hand. So the next time you are craving a potato chip or a cracker, this is just a more unique and fun, savory snack to snack on. You've got a lot of different flavors. You can customize it with your favorite nuts and seeds as well. So whatever you have in the pantry, you've got some sunflower seeds, you've got some walnuts, feel free to sub that in. Look at that nice golden color. So good. I've got most of my savory granola into my little jar. And you know what I also like to do with this? I like to put it on a salad. 
Think of this as the fun cousin to your croutons. Yeah, they're your, your crouton cousins. Crunchy, savory, really pretty. You've got those nuts and seeds and you've also got a lot of flavor there. Look how nice that looks. This is a super simple salad. I just did a little bit of olive oil, lemon juice, salt and pepper. This granola though, it adds a secret touch. Mmm! It's so good. It's so salty, but it's got heat and flavor. Wait, I need more. Like you've got so many things going on, right? Different nuts and seeds. Gives it a lot more texture, makes it more interesting to eat. You've got something new in every bite. I mean, have you ever seen a salad topped with granola before? I think I have to document it. I mean, look at that, it looks so pretty. Croutons? I don't know you. I mean, come on. I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed. Sweet granola, I'm coming for you. I hope this has inspired you to upgrade your oats. If you're neglecting them in your pantry, let them live. Let them live as savory granola, as some delicious oatmeal cookies. Oats are really an MVP. Today all day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is saying bye-bye to boring avocado toast with two of her favorite avocado-packed recipes. Then she'll banish sad desk lunches forever with a savory turmeric oatmeal and crispy cauliflower popper. Hey guys, it's Sama. I am so excited to share two of my favorite recipes with you today. They both use an avocado and they're both for my new cookbook. So let's get hashtag cooking. First up, we're gonna make my avocado cream pasta and then next for dessert, because we always have to have it, my avocado brownies. And yes, I did say brownies. This avocado cream pasta is literally one of my most popular recipes on my blog and I honestly think it's because you just need a blender to make this super luxurious sauce. I'm just gonna slice these tomatoes in half. You can totally leave them whole to roast them if you'd like, but I'm just gonna slice them so that we can get that nice caramelization around the edges. Now I'm just gonna arrange them onto my baking sheet. I've lined this with parchment paper. These rogue ones wanna be left behind, but they won't be. Now I'm just gonna drizzle with a little bit of olive oil and season with some salt and pepper and red pepper flakes. Olive oil, some red pepper flakes, a little salt and then some pepper. We don't wanna roast these tomatoes for too long, only about 10 to 15 minutes. If you do roast them for too long, it will dry out those juices and we definitely don't want that. We want a juicy tomato. Okay, looking pretty good. Now that my tomatoes are done, I'm just gonna leave them here to hang out while I prepare my pasta. All right, very important. Please promise me you won't forget to salt your pasta water, okay? Just promise me. I'm gonna salt it, and now I'm gonna add my pasta. Straight in there. And while this pasta is cooking, I bet that I can make the sauce in the time it takes for it to be done. All you need is a blender to make this super creamy sauce. So if you've ever made a smoothie and you have a blender at home, you can make this pasta sauce. So the base of it is our avocados. I'm using an avocado and a half for this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. Just slicing my avocados, making sure I also don't slice my finger in there. All right, we're gonna scoop some of this avocado out. Look at how ripe and pretty that is. Go straight in there. I'm gonna pit this. This avocado is what's gonna add that super creamy element to this pasta. Now I'm gonna move on to my lemon, adding the juice of one full lemon in here. Make sure I catch all the seeds. This lemon is gonna really make it tart and acidic and bring out that zing, make it very bright and fresh. I'm gonna add some fresh basil. 
and raw garlic. Yes, I'm using raw. It's gonna be really punchy and really bright. And I love garlic. There we go. A Little bit of olive oil. Just a bit. And now I'm gonna season it to taste with some salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Salt in there. Add as much chili flakes as you'd like. I love spice, so I'm going in with a lot. But you make your own choices, okay? Now, just to help everything get moving in the blender, we're gonna add a little bit of cold water. Make sure it's cold because we don't wanna brown the avocado. Just a bit, and I can add more and adjust to get it to the right consistency that I like. Now, it's time to blend. Perfect. It is so luxe, you will not even believe it. Look at that. So creamy. Did you see that? I made that pasta sauce and my pasta is done. Super quick. We love a blender recipe. Now I'm just gonna spoon my pasta out. Before I add this creamy sauce to my pasta, I'm gonna grab one more thing. Just grab some arugula from the fridge. I love adding this to this pasta because it gives this really nice peppery bite to it. All right, time to assemble. Got my sauce, gonna add this into my pasta. You might think you put cream in this, but you didn't, I promise. I'm just gonna really stir that in. I'm gonna add my tomatoes. Just a little burst of something sweet in with this avocado cream sauce. Now I'm just gonna mix in my arugula. What's great about this pasta as well is that you can eat it immediately, but you can also refrigerate it to have as a pasta salad the next day. We love a leftover. We love a meal prep situation. This is both of these. All right, time for me to plate this for myself. Is that too much? It's never too much. <laughs> what is a portion? <laughs> I have my tomatoes that I reserved just for this moment. Place them on top. Make it look really nice, a little pop of color. And now, some freshly ground black pepper and a pinch of flaky sea salt. And that is it. But one last thing, can't forget to take a photo. I didn't do all of this for nothing. I love this. I'm gonna frame this. I'm gonna put this on my wall. I think it's fair to say that it's time for me to eat. Okay, here I go. Gotta get some arugula, some pasta in there. Okay. Mmm. I love myself. <laughs> it's so creamy, you honestly would never know that there's no cream or butter in this. It's crazy.
We are so used to thinking of using avocado in savory recipes, but plot twist, they're amazing in sweet recipes too, especially when chocolate is involved. And that is where my avocado brownies come in. I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees, and now I'm gonna prepare my pan. I love parchment paper, I live for parchment paper. I've already greased my pan here with some coconut oil, and now I've created a little strip of paper that I can just lay in to my pan. Stick it down because the coconut oil really helps it stick. And then I've created these nice little flaps which are gonna make it super easy to remove the brownies from the pan when they're done baking. I've got great news. For you and for these brownies, everything comes together in a blender. Like you could make a smoothie, but don't. Make these brownies instead. All right. We're starting with my avocado, star of my show. Gonna slice this in half. Great way to use avocados when you're sick of the guacamole, when you're sick of all the savory things that you've been making with it. What's really nice about using an avocado in this brownie recipe is that it's super creamy and rich, so it actually serves as a really nice butter replacement and you cannot even taste it. I promise. All right, avocado is in. Time for the rest of my ingredients. I'm using two eggs here. Crack that straight in there. And now I'm gonna add some creamy peanut butter. You can definitely use an almond butter if you like, but I love peanut butter. So we're starting with all of our wet ingredients first. Gonna sweeten this up with some maple syrup and some coconut sugar as well. And then a little bit of vanilla extract. So now I'm just gonna blend everything together here and then get to work on my dry ingredients later. I'm using an almond flour for this recipe because I think it's really nice and dense and cakey, which is gonna be really delicious with these brownies. Add my almond flour in there. Now, we're gonna use a cocoa powder. Make sure you get an unsweetened cocoa or a cacao powder. We want it to be really pure here with nothing added because we've already sweetened it with some coconut sugar and maple. Oh. Now some baking soda. Isn't it so convenient? Like, just a blender and brownies are the result? Sign me up. A little bit of salt. This is gonna be really nice to bring out that sweetness and also balance out that chocolate. And now, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna blend. You may need to scrape down the size of the blender to get it there, but just be patient with yourself and your blender. All right, we're looking really good. Now I like a little bit of a sweeter brownie, so I'm gonna fold in some chocolate chips. You don't have to do this if you don't want, but if you like joy and happiness, I would highly recommend it. I'm gonna reserve a few chips on top before baking so we can just get that nice aesthetic before it goes into the oven. You know how I operate. I'm gonna fold this in. How easy was this? Can we take a moment to address how easy this is? And now all I'm gonna do is transfer it into my pan, which I've prepared already. Look at that. You would never know there was an avocado in here. We put a whole fruit in these brownies and you can't even taste it, I promise. I smooth the batter out in the pan. Make sure it's evenly distributed. That looks pretty good. And now for my chocolate chips, gonna add them on top. Less is not more here. That's my philosophy when it comes to chocolate. Less is just not more. In fact, more is more. All right, so now we're ready for the oven. And they are done. You can tell that the brownies are done when they start to pull away from the sides of the pan a little bit and a knife inserted in the center comes out clean. I'm so excited about this. And again, I love parchment paper. This is so easy. I'm just gonna lift them straight out of the pan like this. Pretty good form, huh? 
I'm gonna slice these, big piece for myself. I'm gonna top it with some ice cream and peanut butter because I love myself and I deserve this. It's such a clean cut too. Who needs a gym, <laughs> right? I, wanna, I need a bigger scoop. <laughs> All right. And now I'm just gonna top it with a little peanut butter drizzle. I just melted this in the microwave for a little bit so it gets nice and melty and easier to drizzle. I think this looks perfect. Pretty good. Now, last step. Just gonna top it with a little bit of flaky sea salt. Partially for taste, partially for aesthetics. I just have to take a picture of this. I need to document it. It looks too good not to. Okay. That little drip right there? Is that a joke? Okay. Now I need to try this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm gonna just leave. <laughs> it's so crazy, there's no butter or oil in these brownies, but they taste so decadent and rich. Who gave me permission to do this? Avocado, really came through today. Lunch is sort of that lost meal in between breakfast and dinner where you don't really know what quite to do with yourself. So in order to make your lunch exciting, I'm gonna hashtag end sad desk lunches and show you two of my favorites. First up, I'm gonna show you how to make some delicious spiced breaded cauliflower poppers and my favorite savory oatmeal with caramelized onions. To be honest, cauliflower is truly in everything these days. We see it in pizza, we see it in pasta, it's probably in ice cream, I don't wanna know about it. But the best way to use cauliflower is in these cauliflower poppers because you know what? They can literally do it all. They're a great snack, a great appetizer, and a yummy lunch, especially when paired with a delicious salad. The key to the cauliflower poppers, it's in the almond meal. Make sure you're buying the one with the skin still on the almonds. I find this adheres a lot better to the cauliflower, making it really nice and crispy. I want this breading to be super flavorful on its own. I don't want it to just act as a sidekick. So I'm gonna add some spices. I'm gonna add my almond meal straight into my bowl. And then I'm adding my favorite spices. 
some cayenne, some cumin, and some turmeric. Finally, we're gonna add a little pinch of salt. Now, time to just whisk everything together. The turmeric's gonna give it a really nice color as well. It's gonna be really nice and yellow and pretty. It's gonna make this cauliflower glamorous. Make sure it's really well incorporated. All right, this looks really nice. Now I'm gonna whisk up some eggs. I'm using two eggs here. We need something for the breading to stick to, so that's why we're gonna make this little egg bath situation. Perfect. Whisk that up. Okay, this looks pretty good. And this is my favorite part, we get to assemble. So I have half a head of cauliflower cut up into florets, and now I get to just assemble. Using my tongs, my favorite kitchen tool. Gonna stick this straight into the eggs. Roll that around nicely. You want it to be fully coated. Let any of that excess egg just drip off. We want a nice even coating, so that's why we're doing this. And then it's gonna go straight into our almond meal mixture. Let the breading really coat the cauliflower well. We want it all over the cauliflower into all the little nooks and crannies. And now, just gonna transfer straight to our parchment lined pan. See how easy that was? That's crazy, that was so easy. We can all do this. And now I'm just gonna repeat with all of the other cauliflower florets. Make sure you're shaking that excess almond meal off as well. We want a nice, even coating. Pop that straight on the sheet. These are sort of like cauliflower wings. So if you're plant-based, if you're vegetarian, even if you're not, it's kind of a fun and new way to get a veggie in your life. You can also totally use your hands for this. I'm being very neat and clean today. I don't want to crowd anyone on my pan here, so this is going to be my first batch. I am so excited for these to get into the oven. I'm gonna bake them at 350 for about 30 minutes until they're nice and golden and crispy. Well, they're ready. Just FYI, I did flip them once halfway through baking so we can get that nice and even crispness on both sides. I really like to pair this with a variety of sauces. I like to have a sauce flight, a lot of choices here. You can really use whatever you'd like, whatever sauce suits your mood. It's also really great if you wanna eat it solo. I mean, this is what I do at home, so I actually eat them straight off the pan. It's the fact. It just is this really gorgeous almond-crusted exterior. Oh, it's so good. There is really nothing this cauliflower cannot do. I'll stand by that forever. Oh, I have to take a picture. I mean, come on. They're begging to be dipped and snacked on. I'm going in. So good. Mmm. That masala on the breading, it's spicy, it's flavorful, and I'm like eating a vegetable. Like, what? You never know.
When you think of oatmeal, you're probably thinking, wow, that's such a breakfast move. But I have to disagree because oats are actually the perfect base for anything savory and grounding and delicious. I'm gonna show you how to make my really hearty, savory turmeric oatmeal with caramelized onions, avocado, and egg and peppery arugula. It is so good. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is caramelize my onions because that's gonna take the most amount of time. So I'm just gonna dice them up right now. If I cry, it's not because the onions. It's because I'm really excited to make this, just so we're clear. I'm just gonna heat some olive oil in my pan and start on this caramelization. Adding some olive oil. Now that the oil is shimmering, I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions. Caramelizing the onions is gonna create this really nice full-bodied flavor. It's also gonna add a little sweetness. So oats themselves don't really have a lot of flavor. So by adding all of these different elements, we're really gonna create our own flavor profile here. We're gonna let these caramelize for about 15 to 20 minutes so it gets a really nice deep golden color and then we're gonna get to work on our oatmeal. What's really great about caramelized onions is that you can make them in a huge batch, freeze them so you'll always have some on hand. I'm gonna let these hang out, get really delicious and caramelized, and I'm gonna go grab some of my greens. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. Can you even believe these onions? They look so good. They smell even better, if you can believe it. And now, I'm just gonna upgrade them a bit with some of my favorite spices. I'm gonna add my cumin straight in here. And then my turmeric. And I really just wanna toast the spices in with the caramelized onions so they become nice and fragrant and any of that raw spice smell goes away. And finally, can't forget them, my salt and pepper. I'm gonna just roast these for a few minutes until they smell really fragrant and aromatic and then we're gonna move on to my oats. Now it's time to cook my oats. I'm actually going to be using vegetable broth to cook them in. You can totally use water if you'd like, but I find that veggie broth makes it a lot more flavorful. I'm using rolled oats here, just by the way. Give it a little stir, bring it to a boil, and let the oats absorb all of that liquid. We're boiling. Make sure you stir the oats while you cook them. It's a really aggressive boil. The liquid is reducing, the oats are thickening up. I'm gonna reduce the heat. Now because you have so many savory and grounding flavors here, I want something a bit fresh, a little peppery bite, and that is where my arugula comes in. I'm just gonna stir in a handful here. You can choose however much you wanna add. I like a lot of arugula, so I'm gonna kinda go for it. You just want it to wilt, and then we're gonna take it off the heat. Now it is time for my caramelized onions. You thought I forgot about them. How could I ever forget about them? Gonna add them straight into my oatmeal. Give that a nice stir so everyone becomes friends. Now I'm just gonna remove it from the heat and add all of my toppings. Okay, now I'm just gonna transfer my oatmeal to my bowl. Can't leave any oats behind, that'd be so rude. I mean this color though. Gotta give some props to my turmeric. Really making that magic happen. I'm adding a few things here. I like having a lot of textural elements here, so I'm gonna add some creamy avocado. It's gonna contrast those oats really nicely. I'm gonna add an egg, soft boiled egg, and maybe some more greens. We'll see how I'm feeling. I'm just gonna slice my avocado. First, I wanna just take a moment. Okay. These are kind of fat slices. I will say I didn't intend to make them this, like, chunky, but you know what? I'm just lunching at home. This is real life. The avocado doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm gonna add my egg. I'm using a soft boiled egg here. I mean, I, do I need to say anything? I'm just not. I'm gonna let that speak for itself. A little salt. All right. Little peps. And finally, to finish it all off, 
some herbs. I'm using some cilantro here, but if cilantro freaks you out, you don't like it, I know it scares a lot of people, and that's okay. Like, that's totally fine. Use parsley, omit it, whatever you wanna do. I'm not gonna judge you. This looks like a pretty fab lunch. She's stunning. Um, you know who's gonna be jealous? Basically all of my friends. So I'm gonna have to send a picture to them, show them how cute my lunch is. Maybe it'll inspire them to make their own cute lunch. Okay, I think I'm ready. I'm ready to taste it. I wanna make sure I get a little bit of everything. Some of those oats, the onions, the avocado, the egg. Mmm. I wanna congratulate us all because we can now say goodbye to sad desk lunches forever. Yo, today all day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada has the cure to your midday munchies. She's going to whip up four easy snacks so you'll always be prepared when hunger strikes. First up, Sama making one of Hoda's favorite sweet treats, dates stuffed with almond butter that can be served hot or cold. Then she bakes up a simple super maple almond granola. And finally, she's making popcorn that's spiced with garam masala. Say bye-bye to butter with a spicy snack. I'll just say this, okay? You have a first date with one of these dates. You will be having more. <laughs> I can't with myself. <laughs> I cannot go a single day without snacking. Whether I'm at home or on the go, it is simply hashtag always snack time. Honestly, a world without snacking is simply not one I want to live in. So I cannot wait to show you three of my favorite weekly snack staples, my delicious stuffed dates, warm and frozen, my nutty maple granola, and my delicious masala popcorn. I love dates, and no, I'm not talking about the romantic kind, I'm talking about the medjool kind. They are my favorite sweet snack to eat throughout the day, and I'm gonna show you how to make them two ways, warmed and stuffed, and frozen and dipped in chocolate. Most dates come with pits, so I've actually already pitted these. I've got about 10 here, so I'm just gonna now take them on a little journey to the microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds, just to get them really nice and warm and juicy. first date or a second date when you have 10 dates ready to be stuffed with almond butter. <laughs> Warming the dates brings out their already naturally golden and caramel flavor and then when you stuff them with almond butter the heat actually allows the almond butter to melt so it gets really nice and gooey and delicious. I really already want to eat one right now. <laughs> okay we're gonna start stuffing them. So I've got a creamy almond butter here. You can also use a crunchy almond butter. You can use a peanut butter, a cashew butter. If there are any nut butters that you're harboring in your pantry, this would be a great time to use them. I'm pretty generous here. I would say I use about a teaspoon to two teaspoons just because I like a lot of almond butter, but you can totally choose however amount works best for your life. Because we've pitted the dates, it actually serves as a really nice pocket for the almond butter to just sit in, a little home, you know? It's like this date was meant for almond butter. You know what I mean? Right? Good form, I think. And I'm just gonna continue with the rest of my dates. So actually, Hoda saw this recipe on my Instagram and has now deemed it to be her favorite snack. You take a date, and remember I told you the whole thing? Yes. You nuke it, you put in some dark chocolate and, and some I almond butter. Yeah. Do you know what I like? <laughs> I like the melted chocolate in the peanut buttery nut butter thing with the salt. So Hoda, if you're watching this, it's for you. You can kind of see how when I put the almond butter inside this little pocket, it starts to melt a little bit and looks so gooey. Oh like a little river of almond butter that I want to swim in. It's a lucky date. <laughs> ah, I crack only myself up. So for this recipe and a lot of the other recipes I make using dates, you want to make sure you're buying the medjool kind. 
I'll just say this, okay? You have a first date with one of these dates. You will be having more. <laughs> I can't with myself. <laughs> Someone's got to hold me back from making another date joke because it will happen again. Okay, wait, this guy needs a little more almond butter. I'm so sorry I neglected you for a second. Okay. Okay, I am drowning in almond butter. All of my dates have been stuffed with the almond butter. They look really nice. They look ready to go out on a date. I need to stop, I'm done, I'm done, I promise. Now that I'm done stuffing all of the dates, I'm just gonna top it with a little bit of sea salt just to bring out that sweetness and balance everything out really nicely. I sometimes also like to use a salted almond butter too and that's gonna really create that naturally salty sweet combination, which we love. All right, and there you have it. My favorite warm stuffed dates, my coffee companion, my favorite date. In my opinion, you can never have enough dates, so I'm gonna show you how to make another recipe using dates. They're frozen, stuffed with almond butter, and then dipped in chocolate. So we've got our dates already pitted, and now we're gonna just go ahead and stuff them straight with almond butter. This should feel pretty familiar. Again, we're gonna have the almond butter find a nice little home in this pocket that we've created by pitting the dates. And remember, we are going to be submerging these in chocolate, so we want to make sure that we don't overfill it with almond butter so that it gets a bit messy, even though we love a bit of messy chocolate. So sometimes when I look at my freezer and I'm like, where did all of the ice cream go? I make these instead. They're also super quick to pull together and use mostly what you have in the pantry. And if you're not keeping dates in your pantry now, take this as your sign to start. If you have a nut allergy, you can even use a tahini or a sunflower seed butter as well. And then when you're done freezing them, they seriously taste like a candy bar. I know you think I'm crazy, but they do, I promise. I eat them for dessert. I eat them as a snack during the day. There's so many things you can do with them. They really are the perfect date. Dates are the perfect date. They are, I'm sorry. And now for my chocolate, all I'm gonna do is melt it in the microwave with a little bit of coconut oil. This is gonna help it get nice and smooth and glossy. We're gonna do this in 10 to 15 second increments and we're gonna keep stirring throughout so it gets really nice and smooth. Put that straight in there. Got my spoon at the ready for stirring and now I'm gonna head to the microwave. Go back in the microwave. Now it is time to take our dates for a little swim in chocolate. I think they're excited about this, I'm not sure. Here's what we're gonna do. Grab a date, just drop it straight into the chocolate. 
Don't worry, it likes this. Roll it around so that the entire date is coated. Make sure you get that residual chocolate to kind of drip off the sides of the spoon like this. And now we're just gonna place it back onto our parchment paper. And now we're going to chocolate swim and repeat. This is like a very luxurious bath, I have to say, for the dates. Because we've stuffed these dates with almond butter, we wanna make sure we're rolling it in the chocolate a little bit gently, just so that the almond butter doesn't come out. It's okay if you get a little messy here. It's part of the game. It's part of the date. No, that wasn't good. Serve this to your next date. That was better, that was good, that was good. Will I ever stop making date jokes after this? No, nope. don't expect me to stop. No, nope. that's not gonna happen. It's part of my brand now. One final date. <laughs> now, just for good measure, I'm gonna add a little drizzle of chocolate on top. It's gonna make it look really pretty. I don't believe in less is more when it comes to chocolate. I think we always need more chocolate. If you don't like chocolate, I want to understand you. Please drop me a line. But also, if you don't like chocolate, that's fine. Like, it's totally okay. But I still want to understand you. <laughs> okay. Now I'm just going to top them with a little flaky sea salt. This is really going to bring out that sweetness, balance out the chocolate. It is the perfect combination. I'm using a flaky sea salt as well, so it looks really pretty and a little fancy. Okay. We're salted, and now we're ready for the freezer. Can we take a moment? Look at how cute they look. These dates are ready for their date. Gotta stop making date jokes. Okay. These are honestly so good because of the chocolate, because of the almond butter, and that little flaky sea salt. They seriously taste like a candy bar. America's favorite candy bar. You know what I'm talking about. Plating my hot dates with my frozen dates. We're going on a lot of dates today. They honestly look so good. I love them. You know what? I need to take a picture of these to send to Hoda. I know this is her favorite snack. She's gonna love the chocolate ones too. These dates are fully ready for their close-up. It's almost unfair. All right, got the shot. I think it's time for me to taste. I mean, look at that. Mmm. It is so good. The dates are so sweet. The almond butter works so well. That salt, it's making everything come to life. I knew there was a reason why I eat these every day. Now that my dates are done, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Let's keep this between us. Granola is super easy to make at home. I'm gonna get the ingredients so I can show you how.
Granola is one of my favorite things to make at home. It's super versatile, so you can eat it solo, just munch on it as you're going about your day, or serve it with your favorite yogurt or milk. I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite nutty maple granola. For any granola recipe, I like to separate my wet and dry ingredients. We wanna make sure that all of the ingredients are thoroughly incorporated, so that's why I'm gonna do this. I've got some melted and cooled coconut oil here, and I'm just gonna add the rest of my ingredients. I'm using some of my almond butter. And this is gonna serve as a really nice mixture for the oats and nuts and seeds and whatever else we're adding to this granola to really cling onto so we can get those really crunchy clusters. And clusters are why we're all eating granola in the first place anyway, right? Almond butter is in. To sweeten it up, we're gonna add some maple syrup. This is the maple portion of my nutty maple granola. Maple adds this really nice golden richness to the granola. It's so good. It's really lightly sweet, so it's not too sweet. I've got all my wet ingredients in my bowl, and now I'm just gonna whisk it until it's nice and smooth. Be careful here. Wear an apron. I don't do it, but you should. <laughs> we're whisking, and we're whisking. And I just wanna whisk this until it's nice and smooth, making sure that all of the ingredients are thoroughly incorporated. Okay, wet ingredients, we're gonna set them aside. They're gonna hang out for later. And now I'm gonna get to work on my dry ingredients. Because I like to maximize the presence of clusters in my granola, it's very important to me, I'm gonna crush my nuts before I add them into my oats. So in order to do this, all you have to do Add your nuts into any sort of bag. Take a rolling pin or even a bottle and just get your stress out like this. You can also roll them if you're more delicate, but I'm really going for it today. I promise I'm a very patient person in general. We want them to be coarsely crushed, but it's okay if we have some bigger or smaller pieces because it's nice to have some texture with our granola. We like the crunch. Okay, I've got my bowl of oats right here. And now I'm just gonna add all of my dry mix-ins in. Adding my pecans in here. My stress pecans, the result of my stress pecans. I should also say that if you've got any nuts or seeds that have just been hanging out in your pantry for a little too long, this is a great opportunity to use them up. I'm adding some almonds in now. It's gonna use some cinnamon here. You can also use some nutmeg if you'd like, really whatever you'd like. And then we're gonna add a little pinch of salt. And now I'm just gonna fold in all my dry ingredients together. Make sure everyone gets to know each other. It's very friendly granola. Now that I've mixed all my dry ingredients together, I'm just gonna add in my wet ingredients and mix everything together. Okay, here we go. It's very aesthetically pleasing. This wet mixture is really what's gonna help this granola have clusters, so I like to make sure when I am mixing both the wet and dry ingredients together that everything is really nicely coated. Okay, listen closely. The really important thing when you're making granola is to make sure that everyone has some personal space. So we wanna make sure that all of the oats and nuts in this entire mixture is spread out in a very even layer so everyone has room to breathe. By spreading everything out, we're also going to make sure it bakes in a very even and crisp layer. And we're just patting everything down really gently, spreading it out nicely. We don't want to pat anything too hard to crush any of the nuts. Now that everything is spread out, I'm just going to go bake in the oven at 325 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes.
While our granola is baking, we want to make sure that we're stirring it every 10 to 15 minutes so we can ensure an even and crisp bake. Spread it out evenly again. And then back in the oven we go. The secret to super crispy, crunchy, clustery granola is actually letting it cool completely before you break it apart and serve it. I know it's tempting, but just don't touch it for a little bit, okay? This granola is completely cool, so now I'm just gonna break it apart and add it to my plate. I mean, you just can't. You can't say no to this. This is crazy. Look at how crunchy. The clusters are what I live for. It's the only reason I eat granola. Like, this is the most satisfying thing to me, ever. I will break it apart, though. Just a little bit. We want to maintain those clusters, though. I'll take granola over a granola bar any day. That's just me. And did you see how easy it was to throw this together? You literally just combine both your wet and dry ingredients and you've got this super delicious, one can amazing granola. And look at this bake. It's so even, so golden and crispy. Okay, it's time for me to taste. I'm waiting to dig into this cluster this entire time. Lightly sweet from the maple syrup, not too sweet, so it's a perfect breakfast companion. Or honestly, you could eat this at any time of the day. You could even top ice cream with this. It's a really nice, crisp, golden layer on top of some vanilla ice cream. Mmm, sign me up. You know what, my dad loves this recipe. I make it for him all the time. Let me send him a picture so he can be a little bit jealous of me in it. <laughs> so he can remember my face. <laughs> he knows what I look like. <laughs> He's gonna be so jealous. Mm. So good. Speaking of my dad, this next recipe is inspired by him and something he used to make all the time. So I'm gonna go grab the ingredients and start popping some popcorn. This is a variation of a popcorn recipe that my dad used to make all the time. Poor guy. My mom, my sister, and I would always steal some before he could even have a single kernel. So I guess this is redemption for him. I'm going to show you how to make your popcorn really delicious, really flavorful with this spice-infused olive oil mixture. So I've already popped my popcorn, and now I'm just heating my pan on medium-low heat, and I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. 
You can use your favorite spices here, but I'm going to use one of my favorites, which is some garam masala. This is a really common blend of Indian spices, and it's really delicious, really warming, creates a very savory flavor in this popcorn. I'm going to add this straight to my oil. Along with some cayenne pepper, this is going to take it up a notch in the spice department because I like things very spicy. Finally, I'm going to add a little pinch of salt. And now all we're going to do is just stir our spices. Now the reason that we're heating the spices here in the oil is because nobody likes a raw spice. Raw spices are not cute to eat. So we want to cook the spices with the oil so they become fragrant, they become aromatic, and it just infuses a lot of flavor into your popcorn. I was so obsessed with popcorn in college, I'm pretty sure it's the only reason I made it through. I would just snack on it like all the time. It got me through my exams. Thank you, popcorn. It's done so much for me in my life. And you want to make sure you continue to stir your spices in with the oil so it doesn't burn. We're only doing this for about a minute or so until you smell that delicious aromatic spice smell. You don't want it to smell too raw. When you allow the garam masala to cook in this oil, you can really smell all of those individual spices, the cumin, the cloves, the coriander. It smells so fragrant. So my spices and my oil smells really aromatic. I've cooked it for about a minute. Now it's time to just drizzle it over my popcorn. There we go. I'm just gonna shake it up so everything is fully incorporated in here. Now I'm gonna drizzle it over my popcorn. It smells so good. Now I'm just gonna toss it so that everything is well incorporated. This is just a really great way to make a flavor-infused popcorn so that you're not just going with the plain salt, you're not just going with the plain butter, there's a little something extra going on. Now that my spices are fully incorporated in my popcorn, I'm gonna add a little bit of nutritional yeast. This adds a very cheesy and savory flavor to the popcorn without actually adding any cheese. that in a little bit and then I'm gonna finish with a little pinch of salt I have to show my dad that I made this it's a little bit better than his Don't tell him. <laughs> I'm so mean <laughs> it smells so good I seriously wish you could smell it I cannot wait to dig in so I'm just not gonna wait I'm going to dig in. Oh, come on. Okay, this might be dramatic, but I don't think I can eat regular popcorn ever again. Mmm, it's so good. And again, you can use your favorite spices here. You can even do a little salt and pepper, a little garlic powder. Really make it your own, but just know that I have a feeling you will not go back to regular salted popcorn. Butter? Who is she? Mmm! It's so good. It's really good. You guys should try this. The next time you get a snack attack, all I have to say is just don't panic. Remain calm. Make these three recipes, they're so delicious and the best way to keep your days going. Whew. Hey guys, super busy, cooking up a storm, but I have something exciting to tell you. Hashtag cooking is back. So tune into today all day. Okay, I got some in the oven, I gotta go. See you later. Say today all day, I don't know about you, but I love pecan pie, but why is it we only get to eat them on Thanksgiving? Well, Samadada. 
and her baking buddy, Chef Samantha, have reimagined the classic holiday pie for any time of the year. Sama is serving up vegan mini pecan pies that make a perfect sweet snack. And then Samantha makes a stunning maple nut tart that is truly a work of art. It's all coming up next on Hashtag Cooking. So we're just oh, stirring. Oh gosh, Sama, it smells so good already. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Don't you want this in a candle? I do. <laughs> Sama's gonna start making candles. I'm gonna start making pecan pie <laughs> candles, baby. <laughs> I am so excited today because I have one of my dear friends and baking queen, <laughs> Sam Senavratna, in the kitchen with me today. We are six feet apart for obvious reasons, but we are still hashtag baking buddies. <laughs> Absolutely. I am so lucky because Sam food styled my first cookbook and it just looked so beautiful. We really bonded on set and I'm just so excited to have her with me today. We are gonna be making our own unique takes on a pecan pie. I am making my favorite mini vegan pecan pies, and Sam is gonna be making a more traditional, delicious, nutty tart. I'm so excited, <laughs> so let's get into it. Let's do it. What are you gonna do first? Okay, so we all know, we all know this, that everything is a bit cuter when it's in mini form, <laughs> right? So today I'm making my mini, the perfect thing to eat and make when I'm craving a pecan pie, but I want something a little bit more bite-sized and shareable. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make my filling. I've heated my saucepan on medium heat and now I'm gonna start adding my filling ingredients. Sounds good. What do you got? Starting with some coconut oil. Do no you keep your coconut oil in the fridge or do you keep it at room temp? I keep it at room temp. I keep it in the fridge. Tell me why, Sam. It lasts longer. There we go. <laughs> Pro tips from Sam, but also, baby. I think maybe you go through coconut oil so fast that we, you don't need to keep it in the fridge. I go through coconut oil probably like one jar a week. So after my coconut oil, I've got my pecan butter. A little fancy today with some pecan butter. <laughs> that is fancy. A little fancy. But if you don't have a pecan butter, you can totally use an almond butter. Now, to sweeten this up, I'm using some coconut sugar and maple syrup. My favorite sweeteners, they're unrefined. They also have this very warm and delicious caramel taste. I find that especially for this tart, it's gonna get so caramelly. It's gonna taste mm. almost like a toffee. I'm gonna mix this up a bit. And then I'm going to add some of my vanilla extract. Delicious. I'm gonna stir my filling for 10 minutes, and then I'm just gonna let it reduce and thicken and smell really delicious. It will smell like a candle. After we do that, after it cooks for our 10 minutes, we're gonna add our almond flour and our flaxseed meal. Okay. So we're just oh, stirring. Oh gosh, Sama, it smells so good already. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Don't you want this in a candle? I do. <laughs> Sama's gonna start making candles. I'm gonna start making pecan pie <laughs> candles, baby. <laughs> Before you add the almond flour and the flaxseed meal, you wanna make sure your mixture is reducing a little bit so you'll notice that it's bubbling up. It's kind of pulling away from the sides of the pan and then that's a really good time for you to add your flaxseed meal and your almond flour. And it looks like we're there. I'm using an almond flour here just to thicken up the mixture okay. a little bit. And I'm also gonna use some ground flaxseed, otherwise known as flaxseed meal. Do you use this when you I make I do yourself? sometimes. I have a dear friend that's vegan so I, I try to use flaxseed for her egg replacements. Flaxseed meal <laughs> adds some fiber, and we love a fiber <laughs> moment here. We're stirring this up so the mixture gets nice and thick. The almond flour and the flaxseed meal are really what's gonna help us get it there. Does it smell good? It smells so good. You all wish you were here. <laughs> you wish you were here to smell this. <laughs> but you're gonna make it at home, so it's gonna be great. Uh, yeah, you are gonna make it at home. Please, <laughs> you'll love it. Finally, for my filling, I'm gonna add my crushed pecans. You can just crush them with your hands, super easy. But I like adding this because it adds texture to the filling, and my crust is actually gonna be more on the cookie side of the spectrum rather than a traditional buttery mm -hmm. crust. So it's nice to have some weight to the filling. Yum. Crush it up. It's okay if you've got some big or small pieces. You love texture here. Your tart. <laughs> it's all about texture. It's all about texture. I'm so excited to get there. See how it's kind of thickening it up? Thickening up. I'm gonna take this off the heat. Incorporate those pecans, get it off the heat, and then get to work on my crust. If we don't eat it first. If we don't eat it <laughs> all first. So 
I'm actually going to use flax eggs to help bind the crust. I know flax eggs don't sound very glamorous, but they are super important in vegan and plant-based cooking. So I'm using two flax eggs here, which means I'm going to use two tablespoons of ground flaxseed meal, and I'm going to add five tablespoons of water to it. Make sure you give it a nice stir. I'm going to let my flax eggs hang out. They can just take a chill pill. And now we can work on the rest of my crust ingredients. Yum. <laughs> Sam's excited. OK, so I've got my melted and cooled coconut oil and my almond butter here. That's going to serve as a nice base for my crust. I'm going to add my almond butter first into my bowl. I'm using a creamy almond butter here. Yum. So I want it to be super basic, kind of a nice cookie crust. Now I'm going to add my melted and cooled coconut oil. This is going to be like my butter for the crust. Mm. It's going to be really delicious and rich. I'm going to whisk this together so it becomes nice and smooth. And then, to sweeten this crust up, I'm going to add my favorite, coconut sugar. This is going to complement the coconut sugar that's in my filling too. So good. Now I've combined my almond butter, my coconut oil, and my coconut sugar. At this point, our flax egg should be nice and thick. As you can see, pretty gelatinous. I know that's also not a cute word, but it's true. It's gonna help it bind. Can I see, Sama? Yes. So you can see wow. how it's kind of thick. Look at that. So fast. Sort of like a gel. Yeah. So it's gonna be nice because this is what's gonna help bind our crust instead, instead of, of an egg. For my dry ingredients, you know how I said it's gonna be sort of like a cookie, mm -hmm. cakey crust? The almond flour is really what's gonna help it yeah. get there. And I'm using almond flour and coconut flour, which I like to do in tandem because coconut flour is so absorbent, almond mm -hmm. flour is so dense, so I find it makes a really nice pairing. Smart. Whisk that up nicely. And here's where it gets fun, Sam. <laughs> we get to combine our wet and dry ingredients. I'm gonna just put this straight into here. It smells so good. Already. Right? Really Already? Does. Sometimes I find that this needs a little bit of help to come together, which mm -hmm. is why I paired. Got some almond milk. You can use any non-dairy milk you want, but it's just gonna help the crust become nice and smooth. So in my crust, I would use butter, lots of butter, <laughs> and flour, and granulated sugar. Yeah. As you can see, this dough can be really sticky, so make sure you're armed with a spatula <laughs> to help your whisk out. You know, though, at home you'd use your fingers. At home, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do use my fingers when I'm at home. You know what? Are we over it? I'm just going to get in there. Just they're, get the, in there. they're the best tool you have. You always say, when you bake, to trust your body. <laughs> <laughs> which is what I love about you. Can you explain this to me a bit more? Is that your baking philosophy to trust That's your body? That's my baking philosophy. That's why you use your hands, right? So you, yep. you feel it and you smell it and you you know use all your senses to sort of figure oh. out what to do next. We really are hashtag I baking know. buddies. <laughs> okay, so it looks like my crust is nice and sticky, well incorporated which is gonna be perfect because now all we're gonna do is transfer it to my little mini muffin tin. You know why I like your dough so much? Tell me, Sam, why you like <laughs> you my can dough. snack on them because there's no raw eggs. <laughs> you know what, it's always... I'm a cookie dough lover, so. It's always a bit of a question on whether or not the dough will make it to the oven <laughs> for me. So now I've added my crust into my little mini muffin tin. All I'm gonna do is use my finger or my knuckle to create a little bed for my filling to sit snugly on top of, like so. And it's really easy and fun, too. You just mold it to the sides of the little mini muffin tin. We're using a little mini cookie scoop to control how much dough we add into the pan so that it's nice and even. I wish I could help you. I know, I miss you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention. I did grease this pan with coconut oil, and you want to make sure you do that. Super important, because you don't want the pies to stick to the pan. That would be really sad. That would be <laughs> so sad. Now that all of my little cute mini crusts are done, I'm going to add the filling. Just going to move this bowl aside. As you can see, this filling has just gotten so thick, and it's delicious, and it's like a toffee. I'm going to add it straight into my crust. 
it's gonna fit nice and snug in there. Like, Cutie. they're like little mini tarts, I know. They're so <laughs> cute. You don't wanna overfill the filling because it will bubble up in the oven when it bakes. So make sure you just level it out. But this guy definitely needs a little more. <laughs> And see how nice it is that this filling is so textured. It's gonna be so delicious when it caramelizes and cooks in the oven. Mm. Finally, just for aesthetics, <laughs> I'm gonna add a pecan on top of each of these just to finish it off. Great. I can't wait for you to try this, <laughs> Sam. My little cute vegan mini pecan pies are done. So now they're ready for a little journey in the oven, going in at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. Yay, now that it's in the oven, I'm gonna clean this up and Sam, it's time for you to make your tart. It's my turn. I'm so I'm excited. Get my ingredients. Classic butter crust is the base for many delicious desserts. It takes a bit of practice to master, but it's worth it. I'm going to show you how to make it. To start, combine flour, sugar, and salt in a food processor and pulse to combine. Now, add the cold butter and pulse until the mixture resembles a coarse meal. Then add three tablespoons of water and pulse the dough until it starts to come together. You can add a little more water if you need to. Tip the dough onto a piece of plastic wrap and then shape it into a flat disc. Pop this disc into the fridge and let it chill for at least one hour or up to two days. On a lightly floured surface, roll the dough into a 10 inch circle. Transfer the dough to a nine inch fluted tart pan and gently press the dough into the edges. For a nifty little trick, Run the rolling pin over the top to trim the edges. Pop the tart shell into the freezer for 15 minutes. Before baking the tart, line the frozen dough with parchment paper and fill the inside with pie weights. This step will help our crust keep its gorgeous shape. Bake the shell at 375 for 15 minutes. 
Remove the weights from the tart shell and bake again until lightly golden, another 10 to 15 minutes. Now your beautiful crust is ready to be filled. Okay, Sam, you're making this delicious nut tart. I need all of the details. How did you come up with it? <laughs> well, it's based on a classic pecan pie, but I developed this recipe for my dad because he is a lover of nuts. He loves nuts more than anyone in the world, and every time I go to visit him, he wants me to bring something nut-related. So that's how this came about. Cute. What are we doing first? I think the first thing I'm going to do is chop my chocolate. So this is a bar of dark chocolate. I am not a chip girl. I know that you are. I just, I find that you can buy better chocolate when it's in bars and you can control the size and it melts a little better. It's nice to have texture too, right? Totally. And I like having all different varying sizes of chocolate. Mm. So every bite's a little different. Ooh. So now that's chopped, I'm going to set that aside and my filling is Super easy. We'll just start with three eggs. And look how nice and bright those yolks are. Can you tell us why you crack your egg on the counter, not the bowl? It's easier not to get any pieces of shell in your bowl when you crack it there on we go. the counter. Little pro tip. <laughs> I'm just whisking this first. And you want to make sure to whisk it really well, because otherwise you'll have these little pieces of egg white in your mixture which is not pretty. Not cute. So we'll mix this really well, and then we'll just add a couple more ingredients. We're gonna add some melted butter. Mmm, <laughs> delish. Yum. Delish. A little bit of brown sugar. And just like you, I'm using maple syrup. I'm from New England, so I feel very strongly about maple syrup. Very on brand. <laughs> So traditionally, pecan pie is made with corn syrup, mm -hmm. which is totally fine if that's what you want to use. I prefer using maple syrup because it has such a delicious flavor. Mm -hmm. And why not add more flavor? And then now my filling is done, I'm just going to add my nuts. So I'm for this tart. I am using three different kinds of nuts because that's what my dad would like. I'm using pecans, walnuts, and hazelnuts. You could use any mix of nuts that you want. I'm also keeping them whole. I'm not chopping them because Number one, I'm lazy. <laughs> and number two, I really like the big pieces of nut. I think it looks really beautiful and 
just crunchy and nice. And you know, with hazelnuts, they usually come with these little brown papery skins. Mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure you remove that before you bake it. You can do that by just putting them in the oven, 375, for about eight to 10 minutes until the, you'll see the flaky skin sort of starts to come off the nut. And then you throw it in a dish towel and rub all those skins off. You can also buy them like that if you wanted so, to. So why would we be removing the skins? The skins actually are a little bit bitter. Mm -hmm. So you really don't want, I mean a little bit is kind of okay, but you don't want a lot of that in your final part. Yeah, we don't want anything bitter. All right, so that all goes. Woo! And you're not chopping your nuts. No, I'm not. I, I just think it looks really cute when they're all big and luscious. Texture, baby. Texture. <laughs> we love it. Okay, so that just gets tossed together. This super, is super simple. It's so easy. I mean, pecan pie is the easiest pie there is. But you know why I do it in this tart shell? I want the nut filling and the crust to sort of be equal players. You want like an even ratio. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I think I crust that. is really important, so. Oh, I'm there for the crust. <laughs> and, of course, we can't forget to add a little bit of salt. You have to season all your sweets, just like you season your savory food. It really brings out all the flavor. <laughs> In the chocolate goes. Yum. Could you use a different kind of chocolate oh, if you yeah, wanted? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. So this is bittersweet chocolate, okay. which is my fave. But you could certainly use milk if you prefer. Okay, this looks nice and well mixed. There's no little bits of egg that haven't been incorporated. It's perfect. So now I'm gonna go on to my crust. Now I think I know the answer to this question. I think I know <laughs> what you're gonna say, but could you potentially use a store-bought pie crust? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Is it time? It's time. <laughs> All right, so I'm adding this beautiful filling. Look at that. I mean, come on. It already looks pretty delicious. Caramelly, those big chunks of chocolate, I nuts. Love, I love the plot twist, chunks of nuts. Chunks of nuts? Yes. <laughs> it's like the name of a band. You gotta make sure to sort of spread out your nuts a little bit. Mm -hmm. And be really careful not to let any of the not to let any of the filling go over the sides okay. because that will make it stick to your tart pan, mm -hmm. which is a real bummer. It belongs in a museum, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, artiste. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> well, as you know, I'm also a food stylist. <laughs> so you wanna make sure to spread everything out so that you don't have chunks of nuts on one side. You know, you want it all to bake really evenly. And you want every person to get every kind of nut in every mm -hmm. slice. Okay, I think she's ready for the oven. So I'm gonna ask you to do the honors. I would be honored to do the honors. <laughs> 375 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. You'll see, it's like puffed all the way through and golden brown. I'm on it. I'm on it, Sam.
This kitchen smells, smells amazing. Incredible. So good. We made it. We took the journey. <laughs> I'm so excited to try this. Tell me how would I serve this? Right. You got to get it out of that pan first. So I have a little trick to show you. Yay. You need a big can. Okay. And now you're going to pick it up and put it on top of the can. And if everything works according to plan, the sides will just fall off. I'm Watch. stressed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can do it. All right. So I'm going to put it on top of the mm -hmm. can. Put the can in the center. <gasps> Magic. A Magic. Magic. Okay. Now you can put it Beautiful. in your plate. Look at that, though. Looks good. Looks so good. <laughs> All right. Going on my little plate. Okay. Like Moment it. of truth, Sam. <gasps> mm. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of like a cookie now that I'm looking at it. The Met called. <laughs> it wants your tart. Cute. Delicious. See, look at all of those whole nuts. I feel like it makes it look so pretty. Mm. So cool. It's very nut forward. <laughs> nut forward. Okay. It's my turn, Sama. Oh, these look so cute. Oh, they come out so cleanly. Yay! They're so, this would be such a good little party snack. They're look mini, they bite size. So, you know. You know what I'm really into this beautiful caramelized mm -hmm. moment, as you would say? Oh, it's a caramelized <laughs> moment. Okay, I'm gonna pick one that has like all that yummy. I wanna see what it looks inside. <gasps> Look at that. That looks good, Sama. Thank you. Yum. I hope you like it. <laughs> mm. Good? Mm-hmm. I'm so happy. The coconut sugar is so yum. Right? Mm. That's delicious, Sama. Thank you, Sam. It's like rich and chewy and crunchy and coconutty. And How do you feel about the cookie crust? I'm into it. Okay. I'm good. really, I love how thick it is. Because it's like. It's luscious. Mm -hmm. Luscious. <laughs> That's what it is. Luckily, there's a huge piece of that delicious chocolate <laughs> right here. This is what I'm going for. I mean, Tim. <laughs> you shouldn't have. <laughs> but you did. For you. I mean, mm -hmm. the chunky nuts are like the perfect complement to the melted chocolate. And the crust? Butter. Butter is good. I mean, oh my god. <laughs> this makes me really happy that we're baking buddies. You know, we can be eating buddies. Mm. I have a request. Tell me. Can we bake together more often? All the time. Amazing. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Sam, I think we have to document this moment so we can remember <laughs> to do it more often. Of course. And take a picture, or a few, you can never have too many. All right, ready? Yes. Okay, we need to get the, the tarts Easy. in there. Yeah, oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> good. Yay! Sam, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. You are my OG baking buddy, and <laughs> I'm just going to continue to enjoy this. Yeah, me too, bro. Myself. Let's do it. I love us. Ditto. I mean, we're so good. <laughs> we're so talented. So talented. Super modest, super humble but this is really good. It's good. It's good. Thanks, Mama. Thank you. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Today, all day. Up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada.